Samuel? Are you there? Please, say something. You wouldn't just disappear anymore. I've been looking all over for you. Ow! What, what's wrong with you? I don't know who you are. I don't know my own husband. You disappear every night. You only talk when it's absolutely necessary. Where is the man that I married, Samuel? I want my husband back! <gasps> What have I done? What? What? What the hell have I done? Oh no! I, I didn't want this! No! 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 Get on with it! Stick the damn fuse back in! I want to open the store! Hmm, let's see. A few plastic containers, bottles, and boxes, light bulbs, cables, grease. Uh huh, and a small carton of fuses. Hopefully the fuse... Hmm. There's just one fuse left in the box. But at least it looks unused. I reckon it's still out of work. An old dust-encrusted fuse box. There are a lot of wires coming out of the top of it, which then run along the floor joists. <laughs> doesn't look exactly safe. Okay then. Just like everything else of Fuller's, pretty well junk. The blown fuse must be under here. Huh, Fuller's already had a go at it, but again, he couldn't sort it out. The three other fuses look fine, but this one's had it. I should throw that away. Otherwise, I'll get mixed up. Ah, well, that's that. Now all we need is some power. Okay, so let's have a look. Ah, let there be light. Don't need this anymore. A very lovely theme. That rickety pallet is blocking my view of the lower shelves. I can't see what's behind there.
photo developer. Looks like it's been there for a while, but the bottle's still sealed, so it could still be good. Fuller will hardly miss it, and even if, I can live with it. Some photo of a beach in an ocean. There are millions of pictures like this. They all look the same somehow. An old clothes dummy. Oh, judging by the smell, it's been damp at some point. Now it's just moldering away. So let's go up. A wonderful working day awaits, full of appreciation and deep personal fulfillment. Ugh. Finally! You make a big deal about going to college, but you're too sappy to replace a fuse. Put that board outside in front of the store. Get on with it! The store isn't doing very well. I don't think a cheap sign is going to change that. <sighs> but what the hell? <laughs> huh. Fuller, what can you say? A good reason to have doubts about humanity? I've only been working here a few days, and I've already given up hope that he might, just once, behave like a normal human being. This is probably the most stressful holiday job that I've ever had. Holiday job in a photo studio? Yeah, sure. Great stuff. Learn new things, earn some money. And the reality looks a little different. Fatter and more bald. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just the right place. Black and white photography is my specialty. Wonderful. So let's get started. My name's Angelina, by the way. Oh, well, I'm Darren. Let's go inside. Welcome to Fuller's Photography Store. What can I do for you? Uh, I wanted to get some portraits done. Ooh. Very good. We can start right away, dear lady. But I, I thought Darren would... What? But he's just an errand boy. A pretty child like you deserves a real photographer. Here, go and pick up the post and take this letter to Mrs. Baiba in the diner in the main square. I've got... things to do. Son of a... Sad. Um, everything okay? No, it's not actually. Um, Carrie died here two years ago. She was my best friend. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, how did it happen? You're not from around here. No, uh, I'm from Boston. I'm spending the semester break at uh, my mother's. Yes. Well, 
Harry committed suicide. No one knows why. Everyone loved her. She was intelligent and always happy. I think there's still a picture of her in old Fuller's display window. The young woman with dark hair and green eyes. Yes, I know that picture. A really pretty woman. She had so many plans. After studying, she wanted to open a kindergarten here in Bedford and with her husband, Jason. I just don't understand it. From one day to the next, she changed completely. Became really reclusive. She was depressed and melancholic all the time. No one could reach her anymore. Not even Jason. Even though they loved each other more than anything. But then one day, she just threw herself into the sea. And no one knows why? No one. Jason has never gotten over it. He couldn't help her. A few months later, he married that brainless bimbo with a convertible. He probably just felt so lonely. It's definitely got nothing to do with love. <laughs> he must have been really lonely. Excuse me. I'd rather be alone right now. Uh, of course. I'm sorry. A flat metal bar. It's broken away from the railings. Looks like you can only buy tourist rip-off stuff in here. But the mail for the whole neighborhood gets dropped here too. And then I said to him, Jason, I need a new car, urgently. Oh yeah, and then? What can I say? It's parked right outside. You can't be serious. Sure I'm being serious. A convertible. Totally cute. Um, excuse me? Have you got something wrong with your ears? No, I just wanted a package. Hmm. Something wrong with your eyes then? Huh? Listen, I'm talking here. Can't you see that? Yeah. I can see you as clear as day, unfortunately. But I have to collect a package for Fuller at the photo store. There'll be no line jumping in this store. You're online, okay? Now wait until I'm ready. Ugh, the young kids today. Always. I'm always having a fight with them. Bad parents, that's what it is. So tell me, what's happening with A convertible. You? So cute. That car belongs to the world record talking lady from the shop. Hmm, that could be useful. Hello, is it something like my turn now? Please, don't let me rush you. <sighs> what do you want? I'm supposed to collect something for Fuller. From the photo studio? Collection note? This is the one, right here. Have you still got another note? There's another package for Fuller here. Uh, afraid not. Can I take it anyway? Hmm. I might turn a blind eye for nice customers. So you're not gonna give it to me then? Hell no! There's a few papers here. Some sort of forms and a pad of blank collection notes. Hey, Rosie. Hard at work, I see. What do you want? Is there maybe a package for me there, uh, Darren Michaels? Mm-hmm.
the lovely Rosie hasn't noticed, and I'm now the proud owner of a blank collection note. Nope, nothing there. I find a lot of the buildings here in the center really big and swanky for such a small town. Especially the town hall. The city must have had money in the past, perhaps on the back of successful whale hunting. Or maybe they did what we did in Boston in the 19th century. Made money out of selling ice. New England ice was shipped all over the world before we had refrigerators. Yeah, just down the street. Thanks a lot. Some people. That's Mrs. Biber, I think. As far as I can understand it, she runs this place with a husband. Um, excuse me. I'll be right there. What can I get you, my boy? Actually, I'm, I'm here to give you something. It's... it's from Fuller in the photo store. Psst. Hey, come over here. I can guess what this is about. The dirty old swine. I should have known. Vermin ain't so easy to get rid of. Tell him I... Oh. Um, you better tell him yourself. Uh, whatever it is, you... Uh... Claire! You gonna talk all day? The customers are waiting! Get out of here. And tell your boss he can go to hell. Jeez, what the hell was that all about then? <laughs> she sure didn't seem to be a fan of Fuller's. I got that much. And the guy in the kitchen, he sure wasn't supposed to see that she had mail. Hello? Young man! You're Darren Michaels, aren't you? Yes, and you are? Oh, excuse me. My name is Newhouse. I'm a doctor at the health center. <laughs> at the health center? You mean at the hospital out there? Well, yes. We call it the Biddeford Health Center. We, we aren't just a hospital. We have yoga courses and cookery courses and... And what do you want from me? I, yes, I, I know your mother, Darren. We had a date here this morning, to be more precise, me and her. We wanted to hang up some pictures your mother painted in the health center. Yes, and she... She's not there. She's normally always... 
She's always punctual, isn't she? This kind of thing never happens. Look, I don't have a lot of time right now. I'll give her a call, okay? As soon as I'm back in the store. It, maybe she's forgotten about your little meeting, Doc. If you say so, but actually... I gotta go. I'll call Mom later and tell her that you're waiting for her in... in the health center. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> He's sick. That disgusting pig. What's going on? Your lovely boss. Does he always try to grope his customers? Uh, no, only the women. That's not funny. Uh, no, of course not. What can I say? Fuller's an asshole. Well, he's never going to see me again. Taryn, would you bring the photos to the hotel for me? Uh, uh, of course. My pleasure. I'm staying at the Wild Coast, room number five. No problem. <laughs> You'll have them this afternoon. Thanks, my hero. <laughs> See you later. Huh. That's the guy from the diner. Is he following Angelina? Hey, you're gonna gawk her ass right off. Whatever the bitch said, it's all a dirty pack of lies. Sure. Back to work! Hey, you got the package? Yep. Well then, give it to me. How'd the photo shoot go? Ah, shut up. I only mean the young lady who... That alley cat's gone, okay? No little goodbye kissy for little Darren. So now, get to work. The shelves here could use with the dusting and the gutters leaky. And you still gotta take my mama's dogs for a walk. Go back to the post office again and ask if the new photo paper's already arrived. The mailman still hasn't brought a collection note. And the store could also do with a good sweeping. He's cranky. I guess Angelina did a number on his ego. Nice job. Okay then, but before I start with all that stuff, I'd better give Mom a quick call and remind her she was going to take the pictures to the hospital. And somehow I've got to get a hold of the film so I can make some prints of Angelina's pictures without Fuller catching me doing it. Seems like she's on the phone. What the hell are you doing using my phone? While you're on the clock? I'm gonna take it out of your... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Look, I just wanted to call my mother, but it was busy. It's not gonna make you go bust. <laughs> that broad spends the whole day on the phone, right? She already called up once while I was shooting that sweet... Some drivel about Adrian and a mirror. I hung up. I got better things to do than listen to that kind of crap. My mother called, and you didn't tell me? The old lady's not all there in the head anymore, huh? Where are you going? You're not on your own time yet! Mom? Mom! Mom! Okay, think, Darren. I need an ambulance. Emergency? Yes. My name is Darren Michaels. I, I, I've just found my mother. She's unconscious. Take it to the hospital, but take it real easy. I'll be following in my car in a minute. How does it look? Difficult to say, Darren. She must have stumbled. And now she's got a serious head injury. Exactly how bad it is, we can only find that out in the hospital. But, but how can she fall so badly that she... 
it's not the time for that now. W was your mother taking any kind of medication? Uh, I, I don't know. She always has a load of painkillers for her back. It, it, no idea. Please, collect anything that looks like medication and bring it back to me in the hospital. What about allergies? Uh, not that I know about. <laughs> That's not good enough. Could you find out the family doctor's number? Perhaps get a hold of her medical records. Yeah, yeah, I'll go look. I'll see you in the hospital. Very good. Oh, yeah. And we need your mother's insurance card. That too? Okay, please, can you hurry? Oh, man. Medication, insurance card, med history. I better hurry. That's Mom's medicine dispenser. There's a box for every day of the week. She always used to joke about it. She said that because of her back, she consumed more pills a day than a whole old folks home. But she never took as much as she was actually prescribed. She always maintained that she'd just forgotten to. The old home doctor then gave her the dispenser at some point. I always found it rather stupid not to take your medicine, preferring to suffer in agony. That's gotta be most of the medication. But maybe she's got more somewhere else. I should check. Mom's handbag. All her papers must be in there. All right, I found the insurance card. I think the furniture is still from her time in England. Quite old fashioned, but stylish somehow. What do we got here? Handkerchiefs, a glasses case, an art magazine, a few Valerian draggies. Hmm, <laughs> nothing I could use. Ah, my mother's address book. I ought to find her doctor's number in there. Let's see. It won't open. It's got a leather strap running from the back to the front cover, and there's a lock on it, too. I need a key. A plant on the windowsill. No idea what kind it is. Hmm. Looks like there's something under the flower pot. It's a little brass key. Yes, and that's got the address book open. Now then, what was that doctor called? Dr. Wakefield, that's him. And here's his number. I just hope he's still got my mother's old medical records. Mom's bathroom. Like her old place, nothing special. We weren't poor, but my mother was always modest. And by the looks of it, so is this place. Aha, some medicines. Boxes, little bottles, tubes. I'll take it all with me. I think that's it. I found all the medication. Hopefully the number's still okay. Dr. Wakefield, 555... Dr. Wakefield's practice? My name's Darren Michaels. I, I have to speak to the doctor. It's an emergency. One moment, please. Dr. Wakefield speaking. Uh, hello, Dr. Wakefield. This is Darren Michaels. Darren? Is there something wrong with your mother? 
Mandy said. Yes, she's been taken to the hospital. She's fallen over and, and taken a knock to the head. She's not responsive. My God. The hospital needs her medical history. Do you still have it? Yes, yes, we must still have it here. C can you fax it over to the hospital? Yes, of course. Hopefully nothing's happened to her back. Wouldn't the support corset protect her? Not necessarily. The corset supports her spine when she's standing up or sitting, but her back has been so badly affected since the accident that a fall can have repercussions. I don't think I want to know. I'll just go down to the hospital and find out there. Do that. I'll have the records sent to Biddeford. I hope your mother gets well soon. Yeah, me too. Give her my best wishes as soon as she's awake. I'll do that. See you later, Doc. Well, that's done. Dr. Wakefield has always cared well for Mom. With that back of hers, she could barely stand, sit, or lie down without causing her pain. And then she has the burns as well. And now this. That's a postcard of Biddeford. It's, but I can't just go off across the town. I'll just get dressed and then go straight to the hospital. I hope she's all right. Uh, hello, uh, I'd like to see my mom, Rebecca Michaels. Uh, one moment. Your mother is still being examined. Have you got the medication with you? Yes, here. Oh, and I've also got the insurance stuff. When can I... Ah, thank you, thank you. I will tell Dr. Newhouse. Please take a seat for a moment. I will let you know when you can go in and see your mother. Excuse me, Mr. Michaels? Uh, yes? There is a problem with your mother's insurance card. It, it looks like she didn't make the last payment. Uh, I don't know anything about that, and I really don't give a damn. Obviously, it's, it's a little unpleasant, but the insurance... Look, I don't give a damn about the insurance. What's happening with my mom? How long is this thing going to take? I'm sure you'll be able to see her soon. But if we can't clear up this thing with the insurance, then we've got a problem here. We'll have to... Okay, Doctor. You can see your mother now. The room at the end on the right. Mr. Michaels? I can't help it if your mother hasn't paid, or, or if the bank hasn't made the transfer, or, or if the medical insurance won't cover the treatment. Here, take the card with you and sort it out. In the end, your mother will be back on her feet, but she won't have a roof over her head anymore. Thanks. How is she? Uh, not good, I'm afraid. The wounds to her head are quite severe. She must have fallen against the table with all her weight behind her. I is she going to... One should never give up hope. But your mother's in a coma, Darren. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's rather... rather uncommon for someone to wake from a deep coma. Perhaps if, if she'd been discovered earlier, and there wouldn't have been so much bleeding in her skull. You're saying that if I'd gone to her straight after our talk, then, then she wouldn't be here now, lying in a coma? But my boy, you couldn't possibly have known. Yeah, yeah, how could I have known? Fuller. Uh, sorry? Fuller! She, she phoned the photo store. She, she wanted to speak to me, and Fuller just hung up on her. Wait, no, that's completely... She was conscious and wanted help, but Fuller... <sighs> Darren, get a grip. It was an accident. 
No one's to blame, and you should just... Just... just what? Simply sit here at the bedside and hope that she gets better? I... I... I can't barely believe that. Darren! You must... Thanks for your help. I... We'll look after your mother round the clock, Darren. You're welcome to stay here. I'll pop in again later. I'm not gonna stay here. I still have things to sort out. That fat bastard's gonna pay for this. It seems to... She looks... She looks so weak. My mom always had a fighting spirit. And all this just because she tripped. Probably rushing around again, doing someone or other a favor. And then, that stupid cupboard. Oh, I could... I... And Fuller. If he even... Oh, I'm gonna squeeze him dry for this. There's a stethoscope. Presumably someone from the clinic forgot it when washing their hands. Doc Newhouse has definitely still got his. I'll take it with me. They ought to be able to wrestle up another one here. No, no, I can't tell you that. You can talk to her son if you like. He's just... There he is. Hey! Hey! You! What the hell? A nurse, and perhaps an administrator as well. They could well be one in the- Hi! Hello, Mr. Michaels. What can I do for you? What did that guy want? He was asking about your mother. What did he want to know? He wanted to know if... Uh, if... If she made it? Uh, yes. But I told him we're not allowed to give out patient information. He ought to speak to you. I don't know the guy, but he's gone out of his way to avoid me twice already. You know who he is? I'm sorry, no. But he's got an accent. I think... I think he's British. But with something else, too. Listen, I don't want that guy anywhere near my mother. You understand? Of course. Thanks very much. No problem. Hmm. A few glossies in a health magazine. Oh well. I'll take the fashion magazine here. Oh, and the auto magazine. There's no choice. I can't believe I've got to scrabble around in my mother's private things so the damn insurance company doesn't let her die. I mean, what are they gonna do if I can't find any proof that my mother transferred that money? Throw her out of the door in her bed? All right, come on, Darren.
Huh. A little wooden box. I've never seen it before. Ah, there's Mum's transfer book. That's what I was looking for. I'll take both. A packet of cigarettes. Is Mum a secret smoker? The little wooden box I found in my mother's bedroom. It's quite hefty, seems to be solid wood. It won't open. There are some kind of symbols on the lid, but I can't even begin to work out what they are. Uh, I don't know about all this kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Huh. I reckon that these are my mom's account transactions. This is the rent, and here's 18 bucks. 45 to the phone company. Aha, and here's the transfer to the insurance company. That's from last month, so she has paid. Those guys need to kick up the butt. What's this? A letter? Dear Rebecca, I have received your letter and am pleased that you're well. Of course, I will furthermore send you the full amount. Your suggestion is well intended, and I wouldn't have expected anything else from you. But there's absolutely no question about your receiving any less, even if he has now left home. You have done a wonderful job, and it's now time that you did something for yourself. Enjoy your life in Maine. With love, C. Strange. The full amount. Even if he's out of the house now? What's that all about? Here's my mom receiving a fat payment from... A $1,500 transfer from a bank in England. BCW Bank. Willow Creek Branch. Willow Creek? That name's familiar. Mom used to live in England. But was it in this... Uh, Willow Creek? And who is the C character? And why is he sending the money? Here it is again. And there. She seems to get the same amount every month. Seems to be practically her only source of income. I don't get it. She always told me she got a monthly injury compensation payment from insurance of the guy who caused the crash, which also killed my father. I definitely wasn't supposed to see that. Suppose it didn't really matter to me either. It's just that... It's just not like my mother to keep secrets from me. I... I'll ask her why she's... lied to me as, as soon as she gets better. The apartment... Hi. Hello, Mr. Michaels. What? I have my mother's bank transfers here. She's already paid for the damn insurance. I was thinking the same thing myself. You know, the insurance company has made a boo-boo. Can I have them? Don't worry, I'll get on it. So that will be the end of it then? Yes, I'll clear it all up with them. Good. That's the cage for Fuller's mother's dog. But the dog is usually in the house. At least, I've never seen it here in the cage. An ancient, rickety tool shed. This is where Fuller keeps the junk that he doesn't just throw somewhere in the yard. So, not much. A reel of fishing line. There seems to be a little still on it. Only the line, I'm afraid. No hook. Hmm. The 
water bowl is completely dry. Perhaps I can still use it. A completely rusted bucket with big holes in the bottom of it. The handle's busted off. I'm gonna leave the bucket there. There really isn't much more I can do with it. Not exactly a fishing rod, but maybe I can catch something else with it. The back door is locked from the inside. I'll have to go in the front. The window is open, presumably to let in some fresh air. Or maybe it just doesn't close properly. Who knows? Why should I break in like a thief? I can use the front door. Whoa, that can't be right. It's the guy from the hospital with Fuller. Who is that guy? And what's he gonna do with Fuller? I ought to listen in. I can still get Fuller a talking to afterwards. That should work. I've just got to be really quiet. If the handle hits against the door, they're both sure to hear it. Done it. And they didn't notice anything. The door is open again. I can go in. I just hope it doesn't squeak. Yeah, Angelina. That might have been it. I wrote down the surname as well. For another ten bucks, I might even remember where I put the note. Not necessary. I know her surname. And your assistant, what about him? What assist- Oh, you mean Darren? That's my errand boy. He works here in the semester holidays. A good errand boy is worth a lot. What do you know about him? Why are you interested in him? You want to poach him from me? No problemo. For a hundred bucks, I'll even write his notice straight away. What the hell? We'll say fifty. Not interested. Do you know him well? What's with all the questions? His mother came in and asked if he could work here for a few weeks. He's a pussy! One of the eternally afflicted. Oh, I feel so bad, and the world is so unfair, and it all makes no sense. Boo-hoo. So you don't know him. And I've got no it- <sighs> That was close. They're both heading for the exit, and I'm none the wiser. <sighs> Who is this guy following, then? Me? Or Angelina? And why? Huh. I'm gonna ask Angelina about the man. She's British, and that guy's got a British accent. You never know, perhaps she knows him. But first, I've got unfinished business with Fuller. Hey! What the hell? A secret door hidden behind the photo backdrops. But what the hell are you doing here, boy? Keep your hands off, Fuller. Because of you, my mother's in a coma. What have I got to do with your mother? Out! Out of my basement! Go on! Get out of here! 
You should have told me that she called. It was obvious that something was wrong. I, oh, I swear I'm gonna... You threatening me? You threatening me? If she doesn't wake up, oh, I am gonna... Out! Get out of here already! You're fired! Out! 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 You better pray she doesn't die. That's the only thing that'll save your fat ass. Get out of here! If I ever catch you here again, you'll end up next to your mother. You're gonna regret this, You'll never do anything, you pussy! You haven't got the balls! You haven't got the guts! You got nothing! I'll think of something. I'll get him back. That man's gonna pay you, just wait. But I still need the film with Angelina's pictures on it from one of his cameras. Hmm. I could use his darkroom to develop the film and make the prints. If he's not gonna pay me, then that'll do as a partial payment. Now all I have to do is somehow get him out of the store. Hey, Rosie. Hard at work, I see. What do you want? The other package for Fuller. There must be photo paper in it. Could well be. Well, can I have it? Sure. Note, please. The collection note? <laughs> yes, uh, I don't have one. Then you'll have to ask your boss for it. Nothing goes out of here without a collection note, you got me? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Huh. The bimbo reads fashion magazines. Why is she doing that here? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, it's you. The hoodlum from this morning. Yeah, well, I was in a rush. A an important job to do. No reason to be impolite. Of course not. Every possible kind of form. Garbage and large object collection, telephone rerouting. Here's a form from the Make Our Town Prettier Committee. My mom's on the board of that one. It seems you should send in suggestions for improvements around the town. Hey, Rosie. What do you want? Is that a girlfriend of yours? Yeah, one of my best ones. Does she sit about in this store the whole day? Excuse me? I wouldn't know what that would have to do with you. I just mean, has she got a job or not? She doesn't need one. Actually, her husband has plenty of dough. And even if he didn't, then she could easily earn good money working as a photo model. As a photo model, huh? That could maybe help me out some. Oh, really? Uh, nothing. It's okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes? I've noticed you're really into those fashion magazines. Are you a model? Me? <laughs> no. You're joking. Y you must have at least thought about becoming a photo model. Actually, I have been approached. Oh, well, that goes without saying. You see, uh... <clears throat> I work for a magazine from down south. Ladies and Chrome? I've never heard of it. It's the high society magazine in the south. The magazine for the top 10,000. I'm working on a piece about life and style in the far north. Really? How exciting. Maybe you have some recent photos. I'd love to show our readers what fine taste people up here in the north have. This is your stylish convertible, right? It is! And I'd be happy to be at your disposal for your story. But I don't have any photos. That shouldn't be any problem. There's an excellent photographer in town, isn't there? Fuller? You can't be serious. That savage would never be able to like me properly. Oh, 
So you don't know. What don't I know? Who Fuller really is. He's an internationally renowned star photographer from New Zealand. He's been living here incognito for a few years. He's working on his life's work. He's uh, documenting normal folks' lives here in America. Uh, of course, he's got to stay unrecognized to do that. That's... No, I can't believe that. I swear, in a few years, when, when he's finished his work, it'll be the photographic sensation of the decade. I... I can't believe it. I... Show me some of his pictures, then we'll see. Well, uh, um... All right, then. But, but don't run away. No way. My god, what a lame story. <laughs> but vanity has always been the biggest weakness for those kind of folks. If I can show her a few reasonable photos, then perhaps she'll lure Fuller out of the shop for me. Look, uh, I've got a few of Fuller's earlier works. Really? Show me! Which pictures are by him? Um, oh, that one there. Uh, oh, and there too. Oh, and here's another one. Exactly. Yep, that one here. They're really wonderful. It was all just for the money. In reality, he's an artist, you see. But the project here in Biddeford is his real passion. Living incognito amongst us common folks, working on his masterpiece. Can you imagine what an effort it must have been for such a cultivated and refined man like Fuller to play a, a primitive, stinking, sweaty asshole? That's true art. You should call him. He, he could photograph you in your car up on the clifftop. Now? Yeah. Oh, oh, unfortunately, I've got to hurry, my lady. Uh, I've got a deadline to meet in Dallas, you see. Oh, of course. I'll call from my car phone and arrange a photo shoot. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, oh, but don't let him realize that you know his true identity. Who knows what that do to his artistic spirit. I understand. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Shall we meet here again this evening? Agreed. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hmm. Now I wonder, there might be a mention of this Willow Creek place in these travel guides. Really? Willow Creek pops up in the index. Page 42, section Horror, Hauntings, and History. Let's see. small box. Willow Creek on the trail of the killer. Willow Creek on the trail of a killer. Fans of the macabre will certainly get their money's worth in Willow Creek, for in this sleepy little English town is where you can wander in the footsteps of Samuel Gordon, the Worcestershire Ripper. The scion of one of England's oldest families, the Gordon's Castle lies close to the town, but is unfortunately not open for guided tours, murdered five people in 1981. Among these was Victor Valley, who was just 12 years old. The Willow Creek Museum awaits the horror-friendly visitor with a permanent display relating to the murders, as well as guided tours from April through to October charming little town. 
end from this horror resort is where my mom gets her monthly payments. Wonderful. Now I ought to have a few hours to get Angelina's film and develop some pictures in the darkroom. It might be that Fuller put the film of Angelina's pictures in the safe before he drove off to his shoot. All right, let's see. Okay, I know I need to enter five numbers. I should be able to hear if the lock clicks into place with the stethoscope. When it does, then you need to turn it in the other direction afterwards. But I need to get a move on. Fuller's had a clock built into it, so there's a time limit. Hey, that sounds good. Yes, there you go. Aha, a film cartridge. Those will be the photos of Angelina. Well, apart from that, there's just a few papers, a folder, and, uh... Whoa, a pistol. I'd better leave everything where it is. As soon as I've developed the pictures and made copies, I'll pay Angelina a visit in the hotel. I... I could really do with a bit of a distraction. A used up, chewed up ballpoint pen. He definitely doesn't need it anymore. And if he does, well, even better. Good. I filled it out. One package for Fuller at his address. I hope that does it. What have we got here? The US, uh, Hawaii, something illegible, and Europe. Fuller smeared half of it with his filthy paws. A greasy map of the world. My World Tour is written next to it. A few places are marked. The USA around Utah, Arizona. Then over to Hawaii. Afterwards comes North Africa, possibly Egypt. Then China, and then Europe. Looks like somewhere in Germany. Hey, Rosie. What do you want? I wanted to pick up Fuller's package with the photo paper. No, please. I can't accept that. Why not? It's not signed. Fuller has to sign the note? Stupid. The mailman, of course. Fuller should ask him tomorrow morning. He probably... It's not possible for me to wait till tomorrow. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rosie. Hard at work, I see. What do you want? Forget it. It's a... Catch 
ketchup, mustard, mayo, salt, pepper, syrup, sugar, huh. and a bottle of vinegar. There's not much left. I don't think anyone will miss it. I'll take some bread. Mrs. Baba won't mind. This is Biber. Yes, what can I get you? Has the mailman been here? Yep, Puck was here taking his lunch break, but that's already some while back. Where could he be now? I really need to speak to him. I'm guessing he's probably in the health center. Can you tell me anything about Carrie? She's supposed to have killed herself? Yeah. Carrie. She was a really sweet girl. Always ready to help. Always friendly. She wanted to open a kindergarten here. There's not much in the way of childcare around here. Parents have to take their kids for miles to find a place. She was such a lovely girl. She still had her whole life in front of her. I saw a photo of her in Fuller's shop window. She was really pretty. If I'd only know. Poor thing. How do you mean? Uh, it's not important. Too late anyway. Jebediah Bitterford or something like that, I guess. of my mother's accident seems to have spread quickly. A couple of people have already sent flowers. So many greetings and get well wishes. I think she's very active in the community. She's probably got a lot of new friends here. Lots of different people have sent my mother cards. This one's signed P. Puck. Wait a minute. That's the mailman. The mailman signed it, so now I've got a sample. I think I could forge his signature really well. Okay, good. I've got the original. I guess the signature is kinda half decent. Are you awake? Did I just imagine that? No, I couldn't have. My wrist still hurts. She must have been terribly afraid of something. But, but what does she mean? Hey, Rosie. Hot what do work. you want? I wanted to pick up Fuller's package with the photo paper. <sighs> no, please. Hmm. So how did you manage to scare up the old fart? Yeah, I bumped into him in the town. You were lucky. 
Here, Fuller's photo paper. Much obliged. You know, that fat idiot's kit really isn't too bad. And pretty expensive. The lights look brand new. He's definitely not had them for long. Okay, I can develop Angelina's film here. And then make some prints. Let's see, what do I need to develop the film? The film with Angelina's pictures on it and developer fluid. There ought to be some fixer around here. And the developing drum is there on the table. A bottle of distilled water. I'll take that with me. A small bottle of photographic fixer. There's not a lot left in there, but it ought to do for one more use, I think. All right, now I've got everything I need to develop the films. Let's go. Completely normal waste bin. I'll make a note of that in case I want to throw anything away. A flat dish about A3 size. If you're making photo prints in it, you have to have diluted developer in it. First of all, light off. The film is in the developing drum. The developer's still missing. Good. Now the developer's oxidizing. It gives off electrons, which are then picked up by the silver ions in the light-sensitive layer of the film. The more light that falls on a location, the stronger the reaction. And so the place then turns darker. In short, the film is now being developed. Okay, I guess the film has to be developed now. So, that ought to do it. I'll pour out the developer. Now the fixer's gotta go in to stop the film from keeping on developing. The film's developed. But the development process will keep going until I pour in the fixer. The film will be ruined if I don't hurry up. <sighs> oh well, that's the end of the fixer. But what was left ought to have stopped the development process. I hope everything's worked. So far, so good. The film's developed. That's the first step. Now I have to make the prints. Let's see. I need photo paper and an enlarger. That's over there. Then I need developer. Oh, there's still enough in the bottle.
That's enough. The developer also has to be diluted. Great. Just as it should be. A dish with about half an inch of diluted developer. That would be the stop bath. The film has been put in. An A4 size package. Fairly heavy. Either it really is photographic paper, or it's full of dirty mags for the week. Ah, oh, nice. 50 sheets of top quality photo paper. The sheet is lying in the frame. The distance of the lens from the paper seems fine for the picture to be projected properly. Then let's have a go. The longer I leave the lamp on, the more contrast the picture gets. Let's try it. Okay, I think that's enough time. Ah, here we go. I have to take the sheet out as soon as it has the correct brightness. Too early, it stays too light. Too late, it'll get too dark. The photo's exposed and developed. Now all I have to do is wash off the developer fluid using distilled water. Ah, the contrast is good and the brightness is right too. But the picture itself is garbage. I can't do much about that. Maybe some of the other pictures are better. Well, at least the exposure and development time seem to be right. I'll try it again. The sheet is lying in the frame. The distance of the lens from the paper seems fine for the picture to be projected properly. <sighs> okay then, let's try again. I have to measure the exposure time exactly. Too short and there won't be enough contrast. Too long will give me too much. Okay, I think that's enough time. Here we go. I have to take the sheet out as soon as it has the correct brightness. Too early, it stays too light. Too late, it'll get too dark. Yes, I've really got it now. 
brightness and contrast are correct. If Fuller only had any idea about photography, then maybe even the picture would be good too. Maybe the next one. This could well take some time. 36 pictures and not one of them actually any good. How can a guy take a beautiful woman like Angelina and then photograph her so badly? But I can't do much about that. The pics have been snapped and I gotta take them to her at the hotel. At least I get to see her again. And it's also not my fault that the pictures are bad. What the? Mrs. Biba? Can I help you, Mrs. Biba? Is Fuller there? Uh, no, not at the moment. Then, uh, then, can you give him this? Give it to him, personally. As soon as he gets back, I, I gotta go. I feel sorry for her. There's something not right going on here. Could it help me get one over on Fuller? Huh. But I can't put Mrs. Biba in danger. She gives the impression she can't take much more. If I could secretly open the envelope, then, then I could look at what's inside and put the envelope in the mailbox later. That would keep Mrs. Biba out of trouble. But how can I open the envelope and close it again without Fuller noticing? <laughs> The letter's about a quarter of an inch thick and quite rigid. The tab is stuck down. I need to open it without anyone being able to tell. If, and I can only lock it from inside. Plenty of people say that the New England coastal towns look Scandinavian, but I doubt if they build such big houses over there. It's not exactly like the Florida or Californian beaches. The water here is way too cold to swim in it for long. The back room seems to be an office. Desk, files. Excuse me. Yes, please? Does the hotel belong to you? Oh, it sure does. My grandfather built it, and I've been running it for the past 15 years. Do you live here with your family? It's like this. The guests value the quiet family atmosphere here. It really is something quite special to stay in a small, family-run hotel. I can't bear those awful tower block hotels in the holiday resorts. And at some point your children will take over the running of it? Yes, I hope so. My daughter's studying to be a hotelier in Switzerland. I only hope that our hotel here doesn't end up being too small and provincial for her. Well, my son, well, he's got rather different interests. What's he doing then? Now, he's a musician. Really? Yes. He even thinks he can make a living out of it. <laughs> Some people live very nicely from it. What does he play? He plays an electric bass. In a, in a band. I, 
I think it's called punk rock. And you're worried about that? You know my mother? Rebecca Michaels? Rebecca? Well, of course! We sit together on the tourist board! You're her son? How is she? Not good, I'm afraid. She's lying in the hospital. She had a fall. Oh, my dear boy, that's... I'll let my wife know right away. We'll send her a card. Well, if you like. So what are you doing here, then? Shouldn't you be with your mother? I'm gonna go see her again later. Well, please, give her our best wishes. Yes, of course. I should be looking after my mother or beating the crap out of Fuller's fat face. But instead, I'm standing here with a stomach full of butterflies. I don't know what it is about her, but man, I got it bad. All right, let's go. Come in. Hello, Angelina. Uh, have I come at a bad time? No, no, come in. I've got the pictures with me. Here. Oh, great! Uh, to be honest, it's anything other than great. The wrong lighting, pathetic composition. Fuller has really no idea what he's doing. I thought that might be the case. I'm sure they would have been better if you'd taken them. How would you take my picture? Uh, well... <laughs> um, your face should... Well, um... Just do it! Huh? Don't tell me that you, the would-be star photographer, haven't got a camera with you. Uh, sure, <laughs> of course. Come on, then. I still need a present for my parents' wedding anniversary. Very nice. Uh, the, the light is perfect. Have you been living here long? Oh, uh, I don't live here at all. I study in Boston. My mom just bought a house here a few months ago. What, uh, what brings you here? Look over that way. Yeah, like that. Are you an actress or something like that? You got it. I'm a famous English actress on my way to Hollywood. No, but seriously. I study literature and history in England. I'm interested in English immigrants in America. Their aspirations, their dreams, their reality. Wow, that's interesting. If you say so, we'll see. I wanted to drift a bit, collect some life stories. I don't yet know exactly how I should organize the work. My mother's from England, too. She came over here more than 20 years ago. Really? Do you think I could talk to her? That... isn't possible at the moment. Th that's a very pretty bracelet. Oh, thank you. I got it from my grandmother. She was always there for me. Unfortunately, she died last year. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Thanks, but you don't need to be. She was very ill at the end, you know? It was a relief for her. She gave me this bracelet shortly before she died. I'm sure you'll find it silly, but I always have the feeling that she's near me and looks after me. Perhaps we could do a few more special pictures for your portfolio. I always wanted to have a few photos of myself as a model. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, um, so, uh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> what did you have in mind? Mm, I thought maybe like this. Or like this. Like this. That's it. 
The film is full. Oh, shame. I was just getting warmed up. Hmm. What do you say we go for a meal? I... Actually, I'm not hungry yet, but... <laughs> Tonight. In the diner. I'll pay. In return for the photos, okay? Um, yes. Sure. Sounds good. All right, then. See you tonight. Can you develop the pictures by then? Yeah. Um, yeah, no problem. I'm looking forward to it. Jeez. That was certainly something. Yes, Miss Angelina Morgan has a room here. Would you like to leave her a message, or would you like to go out? How many nights has she booked? Damn, no more pictures on the film. I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to ask Miss Morgan herself. I can't. All right. Brown comb back hair, a long straight nose, eyes close together. Which room is she in, then? I'll inform her that you're here. Mr... That won't be necessary. I'll come back later. Thin lips, sallow skin, angular face, pointed chin. But please, don't tell her I was here. It's supposed to be a surprise. I... Hello? What's wrong? Sir? And he's gone. What does this guy want? Excuse me. Yes, please? This guy, uh, the one who was asking about Miss Morgan, had you seen him before? Sorry, no. I... He came in and asked me a few questions, then he disappeared. A strange fellow. Do you know him? No, but I think he shouldn't be letting here Miss Morgan. Of course not. I call upstairs, and only when the young lady agrees do I let him up. And he can't come creeping around here? Well, that possibility can't be completely excluded. But you can only open the doors from outside, with a key. Huh. Since when has Miss Morgan been staying here? Hmm. You seem to be her friend. Ask her yourself. We run a very discreet hotel here. Would that be the case if I were to leave a 20 on your counter? Sorry? Nah, nothing. Well, great. I need to develop the pictures before my date, but I can't get into Fuller's dark room anymore. So I'll have to get by with just domestic items. Mum's bathroom will make a great substitute dark room. I've still got the remains of the photo paper. And I've got developer. I need a red light, two flat dishes, and a little acid to use as a fixer. And something to do the exposing with. A projector, for example. I'll write everything down so I don't forget anything. And I still gotta secretly open Mrs. Biber's letter and then deliver it to her later. <sighs> What a day. Well, come on. Come on in. Take a look around. Buy something. Uh, thanks. Ah, a young man. You a soldier? Um... Bit slow on the uptake. Have you served? Sir. No, sir. Ah, so you want to put me on, do you? Find something for yourself and then beat it. A pair of wire cutters for cutting cable. I'd like to buy these wire cutters. Two dollars. What? You don't want to negotiate? Oh, uh, you got too much dough, right? Uh, you got it coming out of your ears. 
Never worked a hard day in your life, and you got no idea on the value of a dollar, I bet. Two dollars is two dollars. <laughs> in your time, it might have been a meal out and a movie for two. For me, it's half a burger. Be happy that you can just buy a burger like that. There ain't many beef farmers left. All that imported stuff from the third world has screwed up the prices. And pretty soon you won't be seeing a, a single lonesome cowboy herding steers across the prairie and, and singing those old trail songs around the campfire? Oh, Yeah, yeah. Typical youth humor. Perhaps Eddie picked it up somewhere in the Second World War. An old radio. Looks like a piece of pro equipment. Are you a radio hobbyist? Radio hobbyist? You mean one of those idiots who thinks it's Neato Mosquito when they have another idiot on the air who only lives two blocks away? I was a wireless operator with the Hell's Devils. 8th Infantry Regiment of the 4th U.S. Infantry Division. I was there in North Africa, and in Sicily, then in Normandy on Utah Beach. I was wounded on the Rhine. That was my eyes. And I got a Purple Heart for it all. And so, are you still a radio guy or not? I'm keeping the tradition alive. I talk to old buddies real regular. Can reach him anywhere. I'd say I'm kind of an expert. Keep my things in good working order. Always prepared! Ah, okay. Good to know. Shelves of useless junk. If you're just gonna bitch, then get lost. Looks like a slide projector from here. Correct. Yep, it's famous. I've seen this picture hundreds of times before. A cupboard full of lots of different things. You wanna buy something? I'll have a look around first. There are three bottles on the shelf. I guess it's hard liquor. Bourbon. I guess those are Eddie's badges from his time in the army. You got that right, boy. The junk shop. Tell me, why haven't you served in the military? Over there in Iraq, they could use whoever they can get. In Iraq? Uh, the war finished two years ago? Well, you don't say. Read my lips. President Bush is going to bring that set on to justice. Sure. You know that uh, Bush is no longer the president, right? Well, he'll still bring him to justice. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Sure. Do you know Fuller? That idiot next door? Sure I do. You can never choose your neighbors, can you? You don't seem to like him. That guy hasn't done one damn decent thing in his life. Lazy bastard just sits around in his store, has his Mommy wipe his ass for him and lets the place fall apart down around his ears. Heed my words. He represents everything that's wrong with this country. You got that right. From World War II, everything's just been downhill, yeah? Pity we haven't got any decent wars still going on. They've even ditched the draft. Go ahead. You just make fun of it all, boy. A good licking or a couple of tours in Vietnam, that wouldn't be such a... Uh... What do you mean, such a... Ah, nothing. The guy's a pig. There's something not right about him. He's hiding something, I'm telling you. So, what's life like here in Biddeford? You're not from around here? Uh, no. I go to College of Boston. Oh, so you're an intellectual then. Some sort of desk guy, an egghead who just talks clever all day. No, I'm... Then you're the artistic type. Some depressive junkie. You're fixing your problems with a self-help group, right? No, I'm studying physics. Hmm. Well, 
We sure need that stuff. So what brings you here? I'm visiting my mother over the semester vacation. She's been living here a few months now. Rebecca Michaels? Oh, well nice to meet you, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, man. How do you get on? I'm blind. How the hell do you think I get on? You idiot. Does it hinder you a lot? Well, sometimes. If I need to look something up. Look here. I'm supposed to figure out what this coin's worth, and I got no idea. It's a rare piece, but it's pretty worn out. Can I help you with it? Oh, sure, kid. If you think I'll fall for that, I give you the coin, you run out the door like a punk. I ain't stupid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about the slide projector over there? I won't sell. Could... could you perhaps lend it to me? <laughs> Why should I? Because you want to help a young man trying to improve himself. <laughs> How are you getting on with the coin? You got nothing better to do than annoying me. If I find out the price of the coin for you, will you stop behaving like an ass? Hmm. Can't promise. Show it to me. You can keep it in your hand. A woman's profile. A few stars and numbers. Have you got something like a, like a coin catalog? Yep. It's on the counter. That's a flowing hair scent, wreath reverse, from 1793. $2,400. Not bad. $2,400. I'll offer him $800. Seller's an idiot. Thanks. I owe you one. Oh, I'm happy to help old, disabled people put one over on the other folks. You're welcome. Perhaps, uh, you could do me another favor right away. I, uh, lost my cane. You've done what? How can you lose a cane? Not how you think. I was playing poker and, uh, had a slam dunk hand. But how could I know that that idiot from the hotel had a straight flush? <laughs> you bet your cane and lost. Yeah. Uh, who's got it now? The owner of the Wild Coast Hotel. All right, then. I gotta pass by there anyway, so I'll ask him. Thanks. You know, maybe you ain't so much of an idiot as I thought. Excuse me. Yes, please? I've heard that you have poker games here every now and again. Could I maybe sit in on a game? I ask you, please, this is a respectable hotel. We don't condone illegal gambling. I'd like to get back into playing poker. I'd be interested in a blind man's white cane as a bet. Yes, nice. <laughs> we sometimes play a little game or two of poker here, but nothing public, quite private. Never for high stakes. Wouldn't you say that for a blind man, a white cane would be quite a high stake? He wanted to bet with it. You know what? I think I'll inform the police about your game. I mean, that can't be right now, can it? You can't take a cane away from a blind man. Well, go ahead and call the cops. I've got nothing to hide. I won the cane fair and square. You, you can ask the other players. If you say so. So what was that again about the, the fair and square win in an illegal gambling game in a respected local hotel? 
What would Rosie think if I told her about it? What would other people think, in fact? Taking the cane from a blind man. What a devious, slimy character you are. No, please, don't do that. I... I am sorry. I really didn't want the cane, you know. Eddie just didn't have any more dough with him. And he threw it in as a guarantee. How much did he stake on it, then? Oh, it's not worth talking about. What's a hundred bucks, anyway? You... seeing him today? I could give you the cane. <laughs> give him my best, and tell him he can consider it a gift from a good old friend. Well, great. I'll take and it give your mother my best when she... Yeah, yeah. A life that they used to like for. Morning! How do you know that? I thought you were blind. You stink of perfume. Like a whorehouse I once visited in Lille. Smells like... teen spirit. Uh... if you say so. There was something else. Well, spit it out. What do you want? Your blind man's cane. Well, thanks. You know, you're smarter than you sound. Best put it by the door. Hey, listen, uh, if I can help you out in any way, you just ask. About the slide projector. It ain't for sale. I don't want to buy it. I, I just need it for a while. I want to borrow it. I, I did help you with the coin and got your blind man's cane back. Hmm. That's true. Okay, take the projector, but bring it back, today. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it back today, and undamaged. Good, good. How nice. Yes, this'll do for my red light. This chain of lights is gonna stay dark to me. My mother keep Somewhere here there was... Aha! A flat dish. Exactly what I need to develop the pictures. Alright. I've got everything I need to develop the pictures. It's gonna take a bit of time, so let's get going. I've got the pictures. Huh. They've come out quite well, considering the conditions I had to develop them in. All the stuff that I need for developing is in the bathtub. I hope I won't be needing it for a while. I'm just gonna take any slide projector. I wish I could make some reprints of some of the pictures. But there's no more photo paper left. But I'm gonna keep at least one.
kettle's full. That's where Mom indulged herself. We had an ancient wood burning stove at home that she used to cook on. She always said it reminded her of a time as a cook back in England. Hey, the steam could undo the glue. Huh, let's try. It's steaming. The steam's loosening the glue. Got it. The paper hasn't torn and the glue still sticks. I can reseal the letter. But first, I want to see what's inside. Holy, that's got to be a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. Huh. There's some kind of blackmailing going on here. Mrs. Biber hates Fuller and, and she didn't want her husband to see that I gave her a letter from him this morning. It would seem he knows nothing about it. But what's it about? Sex? Ugh, surely not with Fuller. Something to do with the diner, or, or from Biba's past? I'd love to send Fuller off to jail for blackmail. But first I gotta find out what he's blackmailing Mrs. Biber with. But tomorrow's another day. I'll put the letter in Fuller's mailbox and get myself ready for my date with Angelina. Hopefully he doesn't take too much pleasure in it. I'll go and visit my mother one more time, and then I'll get ready to go out. And you think that the guy is following me? A student from England? Why? No idea. I, look, I didn't say that he is following you. I, I only said that he might be. Perhaps it's me he's following. It's all right, Darren. I didn't mean to upset you. What's wrong with you? Oh, I don't know. It's just all too much for me at the moment. My mom's in the hospital, there's this thing with England, and then this guy. Which thing with England? Yeah, well, my mom, she gets money from England. A, a village called Willow Creek. Do you know it? Uh, yes, I even know roughly where it is. I think it's a place where my mom worked as a cook. And she still gets money from there? Her plum pudding must be heavenly. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, that's more than 20 years ago. Who's sending her over a thousand dollars every month? And for what? I found this box next to the bank transfers. Huh. I've never seen it before. And that coat of arms with the three lions? That's an English emblem, isn't it? It is. What exactly are you doing? I just thought you maybe wanted to see what's inside. You know how to open it? There were thousands of these caskets produced in the 19th century. There's a special kind of lock mechanism that's supposed to keep curious people out. Well, it didn't really work. What's inside? A photo. In front of a wrought iron gate. Is that your mum? And the man, is that your father? Is there anything written on the back? Lark Mill Castle, Willow Creek, England, October 1969. What's wrong? My mum. Darren? Do you. Do you think she looks five months pregnant?
Jaron Michaels? My name's Conley. I'm captain of the local police department. <laughs> Are you gonna arrest me? No, we're not. But we need to talk to you. May I come in? Uh, sure. So? You work in Fuller's photo studio, is that right? Not anymore. Not since yesterday. Not anymore? Why? The work atmosphere. I... I quit. Quit? Or were you thrown out? Was there an argument? Why? Has something happened to Fuller? Please say yes. Well, yes. Have you arrested him? Or did someone beat him up in a dark alley? Would you be happy about that? Only if it was painful. He's dead. He was stabbed to death in the early hours of the morning. We're still counting the wounds. Can you tell us anything about that? No. Nothing you'd find fitting. Someone must have been pretty angry with old Mr. Fuller. How angry were you with him, Darren? So angry that I don't feel sorry that he's dead. But I've got nothing to do with it. L look, I saw him for the last time yesterday afternoon when he threw me out. And you haven't been in the store since then? No. Darren, we found your fingerprints. Of course, I worked there. On the safe. Was that part of your job? Look, what do you want? Where were you last night? I was in Biba's diner with a friend. Correct. Angelina Morgan. You haven't known her very long, have you? Do you have to be engaged if you want to go out with a woman in this town? Very funny. Only if you did know her better, you might be able to explain why Miss Morgan murdered Mr. Fuller. Uh, what? She was practically caught red-handed. Practically? She was standing over Mr. Fuller's corpse, covered in blood. The whole thing could have only been clearer if we had a notarized, certified video of the murder. That's crazy. Perhaps she found Fuller dead and wanted to help him. That's what she claims, too. And what was she doing in Fuller's store in the middle of the night? What do I know? Ask her. We have. She says she was told to go there by a man on the phone. By the guy following her? Correct. By a stranger. That's why I'm here. Miss Morgan says that you told her about... about her... pursuer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the hotel owner saw him, too. I've already been to see him. He confirmed that someone was asking after Miss Morgan, but he couldn't give us a proper description. Did you get a proper look at the man? I did. Um, his eyes are close together, and... Not here. Come down to the station. We can do a photo fit there. What about Angelina? Yeah. Well, let's see what the guy you saw has to say about all this. Give me a break. If he was the one who called, he's not gonna admit it. If there was a call in the first place. Please, come as soon as possible. We need that photo fit. No, that's not him. The hairline was higher. Like that, perhaps? No, it was more... Can't you just let me have a go at it? Sure. Look, here are the various chin shapes and eyebrows and so on. Yeah, I was watching you. I get the idea, okay? You can change things using the arrows. When you're happy with it, click on save... All right, I've got it. Okay, okay. Let me know when you're finished. Hmm. Okay. The quicker the police find this guy, the quicker I can help Angelina. What did he look like again? So? Ah, uh, that's him. The guy that followed me and Angelina looked like that. Hmm. I don't know him. Perhaps a tourist. You also said he spoke with an accent. Exactly. M what now? We'll post the pictures around town and invite the gentleman in for a talk. 
And Angelina? Yes. Well, she's... Oh, Angelina! Darren! It wasn't me! You've got to get me out of here. They want to pin this on me. I know, but, but we'll get this sorted out. They want to charge me this afternoon. You've got to... You've got to somehow... Come on, Miss Morgan. Darren! I'll get you out of here. I I'll think of something. Come on, Darren. Leave me alone. I'm gonna find out what's going on here. She is innocent. What was her motive? That's the thing. We don't know. Look, others had a motive. Full of blackmailed people. Is that so? It, Mrs. Biba from the diner? She paid Fuller. Lots of money. How do you know that? Is that important? She had a motive. A and what about that guy? He was at Fuller's yesterday. We didn't find any money in Fuller's store, and this gentleman's a witness. Nothing else. As far as the alleged blackmailing is concerned, have you any evidence? Evidence? Ask Mrs. Biba. And she's gonna tell us if she was blackmailed by Fuller? She... put on the pressure. Based on your speculation? No, that's not enough. We need evidence. Or at least something that would suggest blackmail before we can move on it. And until then, our only suspect is over there behind bars. Fine. Then I'll get a hold of the evidence. Where do I start? I need evidence that Fuller was a blackmailer. But what did he blackmail Mrs. Biber with? And was it just her or were the others? I bet the secret door in his basement has something to do with it. But how do I open it? Has Fuller still got the key on him? I've got to find out. What piss-awful weather. Suppose it's fitting somehow. I should have guessed. The police have sealed the door. I've got to find another way. Oh well. Now Fuller's mother's got less washing to hang up. A length of tow rope, a bit more than two yards long, and in great condition. Ropes are always good. Yep, that could be my way into the house. I can get into the basement through the light well. I've just got to get rid of this grill first. It looks very heavy, and it's rusted into the concrete. I'll tie the rope to the window grill and the basement grill. Pretty heavy. Hey, if it worked in ancient Egypt, it should work here. Oh! <laughs> 
my private doorway to Fuller's Realm. I'll take the bar with me, and perhaps I can use it a second time. Beaten by a centuries-old technique. Shame on you. Fuller's secret. That's got it. The clips are off and the screen's gone up. When you stand here, it feels like... Uh, like, like what? Something like when you, when you see in the dock and he has you stand on a set of mechanical weighing scales. Everything slides slightly back and forth. The floor gives a little as you stand on it. Could it really be a set of scales? Would that fit in with a secret door? Aha! I knew it. If it really is a kind of scale, then it could measure Fuller's weight while he tapped in the secret number into this pad, and the door would only open when the two matched. Pretty well thought through, for sure. Oh, for me, there's the problem that I have no idea how heavy Fuller is. I've got to find that out if I want to make progress here. I don't think I'll find anything that the police missed. They've examined this area carefully. sleep. Battered looking numeric pad with small metal buttons. I guess that you have to enter a code to open the door. If it really is a kind pretty well thought through for sure. I've got to find that out if I want to make prog- Clues in the trash, huh? Huh. It's worth a try. Oh, man, that stinks. So, what we got here? Ugh, trash bags with leftovers. Packaging, paper towels, and... Hey! Some torn up pieces of paper. That really might be interesting. Those are the paper snippets out of the trash can at the diner. Let's see if I can put them back together.
Yeah, I think it's a letter from Fuller to Mrs. Biber. Maybe even the one I stuck in her hand yesterday? Dearest Claire, I'm a little disappointed that you don't come to visit me anymore. Don't you miss our time together at all? All the fun we had? Take a look at the pictures. You look so happy and contented. Don't you think so too? I tell you that was some kind of fun we had too. And you just can't bring yourself to admit it. Are you worried about it getting out? Well, it would be too embarrassing, wouldn't it? A married businesswoman has to watch her reputation. What would the folks say? What would your husband do with you? It would be a scandal. But I'll protect you from it. Me and 15 Ben Franklin stand between you and shame. I'll expect the, uh, bonus this evening. Bring it to me, and I'll enjoy myself with your pictures for a few more weeks. F. Hmm. That's at least evidence that Fuller was blackmailing Mrs. Biber. Fifteen Ben Franklins is fifteen hundred bucks. But is that going to be enough for the cops? They're going to ask her what he was blackmailing her with. And if they ask her, Biber will deny everything. I've got to find out what Fuller was using to blackmail her. And I'm sure that the answer is behind that secret door. Sorry, Mrs. Biber? What's happened to your eye? Let me guess, you fell down the stairs. I... Yes. And your husband was standing at the bottom doing his boxing training. What's this got to do with you? I just don't understand it. How often does this happen? Not often. Just sometimes. Maybe you ought to move to a bungalow without stairs. Yeah, you think you can give me advice? You married? You trade in your pride when you do that? You've never been in love. If you had, you'd never ask that. Okay, what do you want to drink? Is it too early for a whiskey? What do you think? Mrs. Biber? Haven't you heard what's happened to Fuller? Yes. But... I don't want to talk about it. Why not? You hated him. Maybe your life will be a bit easier now without him around anymore. How can you say that? He's been murdered. You're making it look like I wanted that to happen to him. Did you then? No. After everything he did to you? What... What do you know about that? Oh, a little. Nothing. You don't know a thing. And if there is anything, you save it for yourself. Or what? The same thing that happened to Fuller will happen to me? Get out. Psst. Yes, what can I get you? A girl I know is being suspected of having killed Fuller. I'm sorry about that. Yes, she was lured into a trap. She has no motive. She also wasn't being blackmailed. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Was Fuller blackmailing anyone else? Did anyone else have a motive apart from you? Oh, you got nerve. I wasn't being blackmailed. Listen, I'm sorry about what happened to your friend. But if she's not guilty, then she won't be held for long now, will she? And I don't know anything about blackmail. Huh. So you don't want to help me get an innocent girl out of jail? I... I can't. Mrs. Biber? So, uh, are 15 Ben Franklins enough of a motive for murder? What? The $1,500 you had to pay Fuller. Get out of here. 
You just can't... You don't... Have any evidence? Could be I do. It's about time the truth got shook out. I didn't murder Fuller. Where were you when it happened? So now you're a cop. Would you prefer it if I go to the cops on this? I was at home. Alone? With my husband. I believe you. That shiner you have there says it all. Dr. Newhouse from the hospital. Oh, excuse me. The health center. Excuse me. Dr. Newhouse. Hello, yes? So how was old Fuller killed then? Oh, I, I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you anything. They're still investigating. What? You think I'd tell the press? I did used to work for him, and I'd like to know what happened. Well, okay then. He was stabbed. And more exactly? He was stabbed nearly a dozen times. Not a nice sight. Did he bleed to death? Not necessarily. Could have been shock. Could well have been that some vital organs were injured. Huh. So it looks like Fuller had a pretty free choice of how he checked out. Somebody wanted to cover all the bases for him. Darren, you really shouldn't speak of the dead like that. I'm not interested in the dead. I'm interested in the murderer. As I understand it, there's also a department in the health center for the less mobile. A morgue. <laughs> yes. That's right, this is a small town. We doctors at the health center are also responsible for checking corpses. So don't you have to have special training for that? If there's even just the slightest sign of a crime, then we get an experienced pathologist over from Portland. So that means that Fulla still hasn't been looked at. Right now, we're waiting for the pathologist. We've only prepared him. Do the nurses sometimes stick their fingers in the deceased's personal effects? Outrageous! Of course not! These things are properly stored away in the morgue, as they should be. Thank you. Well, that's... If you've got any more things you want to add... Yes. Um, hello. Are you delivering something? Yes. <sighs> Delivery note. Uh, I must have forgot it. Well, go and get it. Oh, of course. There's a delivery note for liquid soap. I can't take anything. The nurse will notice. There are a few cables hanging down the side of the unit. Mostly to the sensors attached to my mother. A set of scales. Maybe for overweight patients? They certainly look a bit more solid than the ones you have in your bathroom at home. <sighs> All right then, I'll take that heavy thing with me. Typical hospital chic. Hmm, there's a little medicine bottle lying here. Perhaps it belonged to the patient who was here before my mother. 
Laxativa, a powerful laxative. Huh, sounds useful. I'm standing here in front of my mother who's lying in a coma, and all I can think of is her lying to me about her accident. Just what kind of a person am I? There are a few cables hanging down the side of you. The machine only monitors my mom's vital functions, so it doesn't matter if I loosen a cable here. Perhaps the delivery note will be of use. Empty package. Delivery yes. Some... <sighs> Delivery note. <laughs> Whatever. The package? I've got it here. Okay. Can I go in now? No, you can't. Where's your pass? My what? Your visitor's pass. You have to get a visitor's pass back there. Oh, come on. What is this garbage? I just want to take my package to the mortuary. And you need a pass to do that. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You could say so. I'd think about that if I were you. Hi. Hello, Mr. Michaels. What can I do for you? You heard what happened to Fuller? Oh, yes. Beatrix told me. They brought him in here this morning, covered in blood. Did you know Fuller? Not personally. What do you mean by that? I'd heard of him. You... you... Okay, listen. I'll tell you. As a woman, it wasn't an especially good idea to have your picture taken by him. Why not? He was a creep. And was not supposed to be able to keep his hands to himself. That sort of thing gets around, of course. I'd like a visitor's pass, please. You don't need one. They're just for folks delivering stuff. But you're wearing one, aren't you? Dick, the security guy over there, insists that all the employees wear ID. I'm not so petty. Visitors shouldn't have to get messed up in paperwork. Oh yeah? So, so that means that just about anyone can wander in here off the street? No, no, no. Everyone's got to register with me first. You mustn't worry about your mother. Of course not. She's only lying in a coma. It wasn't meant like that. Thanks very much for the information. No problem. What of Europeans in particular? Mrs. Biber? I'll be right there. Hey, um, can I get a pot of coffee? On its way.
Dad, you hate me. Hot, hot. Oh, man, sorry. It was an accident. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Your thoughts are elsewhere. I'll give it here, Dr. Newhouse. I'll rinse out the stain. Thanks. No harm meant. No damage. I just gotta keep it cool. Now that's what I call a serious coffee stain. And the ID badge is still pinned to the lab coat. So now I've got some ID. Excellent. The security guy at the morgue surely won't expect it that closely. Yes. Um, are you delivering on. something? Yes. <sighs> the package? I've got it here. Okay. Can I go in? I, uh, I've got a pass. All right, then. A syringe. Quite a size. I guess any remaining fluids are sucked up with that. I certainly wouldn't want my flu shot injected with it. Huh. Six clipboards in total. Let's see. There are lists of the personal belongings each dead person had on them. But there are no names. There's 394 written on the first one. I guess the numbers on the lists here relate to the numbers on the boxes. That means if I can work out which of these lists belong to Fuller, then I know which box his stuff is in. Number 394. Hairbrush, lipstick, car keys, mirror. That's hardly going to be the contents of Fuller's pockets. Number 412. Wallet, keys, Polaroid photo, that could be Fuller. Oh, wait a minute, a wedding ring. Fuller was never married, so it's not 412. Number 433, credit cards, earrings, anklet. Uh, no, not Fuller's. Number 448, wallet, driver's license, credit card, keys, bills. I wouldn't rule that out as being Fuller's. But I'm not certain. Number 442. Driver's license, photos, small change, a pacifier, baby powder. Definitely not fuller. Number 399. Knife, torch, ski mask, skeleton keys, small change, plastic bag. Unless fuller was about to set off on a secret thieving trip when he was murdered, then that's not his. Number 400, and that's the only box left. It's gotta be it. Boxes. They appear to be airtight. There's a number stuck to every box. I think the personal effects of the dead people are stored in them. Fuller's box is number 448. But where is it? That's Fuller's box. Huh. Fuller's keys. Those could be useful. Hey, and here's his wallet. Driver's license, a few dollars, credit card, a few bills. But no secret numbers or anything like that. 
I think I'll take the keys. The wallet and the rest of that stuff is of no use to me. A soda machine. A bottle of soda. Great. Not here. The security guy is sitting directly opposite. Hey! I've forgotten some... I've drawn a little of the laxative into the syringe. Nice. That's the laxative in the soda bottle. Excuse me. Now what? Are you all on your own here? I mean, who occupies this strategically important position uh, if you have to go to the washroom? I just... Man, I can't just go. Just every few hours or so. And then I shut everything up. What did you think I did? And you can't fit in a quick smoke every now and again either? Nope. And I've given it up anyways. What's much worse is not having a drink. You drink alcohol in your work time? Man, of course not. I'm in a Coke or something. I left my bottle in my car today, and it's still some way off until my first break. And right now, boy, I'm parched. Yeah, <laughs> life's a bitch, huh? You want me to wait here while you go off and get yourself a soda or something? I bet you'd like that, wouldn't you? Hey boss, you want a soda? What do you want for it? Nothing. You just gonna give me a soda, as a friendly gesture. Exactly. That's very... nice. Perhaps you could do me another favor. Can you keep watch here for a minute? I'll be right back, oh, real quick. I thought you couldn't leave your post. It's an emergency. I'll be back in a minute. We here. Okay, no problem. What was that about? Strange. Oh well, he's gone. and the buyer's weight together. That way... Three hundred and forty-eight pounds. The only question is, how much of that is buyer and how much is fuller? Let's see. The buyer weighs about 53 pounds, 348 for fuller with the buyer, minus 53 for the buyer makes 295 pounds. That's fuller's weight, and that's what I gotta put on the scales. Perhaps a bit more, 
He wasn't wearing any clothes and had lost a lot of blood after all. I weigh nearly 198 pounds with clothes on, so I just need around another 99 pounds on the scale with me. I'm sure I can find something in the basement. Don't move! What the? Look, I didn't want to... What are you doing? Trying to poison me, huh? That ain't gonna work on me. Me? Po poison you? What makes you think that... No one has ever offered me a drink. And someone like you, of all people, bring me a soda. Yeah, well, I thought you were thirsty. Yeah, sure, junkie. You want to steal medication, huh? Or, or equipment to make some money, don't you? That's crazy. I, I was... The soda's poison, right? It's in the lab right now. And if it turns out you're trying to poison me... <laughs> yeah, well... Poisoned... You going to jail for this? You, you terrorist! And you were missing your old boss and wanted to say goodbye to him. Something like that. Don't give me that crap. Breaking and entering, larceny, we can lock you up for that. Breaking and entering and larceny. <laughs> According to the security guy, I'm a seriously dangerous terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> he caught you snooping around and that's bad enough. I understand that you want to help your girlfriend, but this kind of thing doesn't really help. When this gets out, and Dick's gonna make sure that everyone in town knows about his heroic act by tomorrow morning, then it's gonna look like you wanted to get rid of evidence, or something like that. Can I go now? Darren, I'm not against you, but keep your nose out of this. If we catch you snooping around again, you're gonna end up in the can, capiche? Yeah, capiche. Now get out of here. I've gotta reassure Dick and make it clear to him the boy's harmless. And I'm gonna continue where I left off, at Fuller's secret door. Okay, I'm missing about 90 pounds of additional weight. That shouldn't be a problem. Along with my weight, another few pounds ought to do it. I reckon that'll be exactly enough. Now all I have to do is find out the code. A cheapo old-time cuckoo clock. A testament to Fuller's fine taste for stylish interior decoration. Hey, there's a small opening. I could easily fit my finger in there. Let's see what happens when I turn the key. Okay, so I've wound up the clock. Now I'm pushing the key in. Oops, it clicked. Sounds like it adjusted something inside the clock. What the? Uh, what's this then? This box was hidden in the clock. Come on, I just need a little tip for the damn combination. Huh, four negatives. Right, let's give it a go. I can move the transparencies around and, and turn them over. Let's see if I can arrange them in an order that makes sense.
2482. The rows produce digital figures when arranged in the right order. I'm certain that's the code for the secret door. The negatives were Fuller's emergency memory aid. It might work now. That's it! At last. Now that the door's open, I'll get this junk out of the way. Somewhere there's gotta be... Ah, here. Oh my god. The bed's got a metal frame and a worn mattress. It's stained and moldy. No sheet, no pillow, just this grubby blanket. Lots of little bottles of... Knockout drops. That's... Oh, God. I picked them up. Oh, fullest package, it clinked. It wasn't enough for Fuller to just drug his victims. He tied them up, too, and probably got some perverse pleasure from the fact they were at his mercy. He recorded it. The pig got it all on video. I don't want to have anything to do with that. What would have happened if he still had some of that stuff when Angelina was here? Would he... Did he call her, perhaps? Did he want to lure her here and she... She might have defended herself and... But then it'd be self-defense. Angelina would have told the police that. Come on, stay concentrated. Angelina had nothing to do with it. The metal locker looks very old. Perhaps it's from a school or a sports club. Cupboard's locked. But there's no padlock and no combination lock on the door. There's gotta be some other kind of mechanism. Weird. That curtain looks like Fuller stole it from his mother. Old fashioned but in better shape than everything else here. What have we got here? A metal plate has been built into the wall. In the middle of the plate is a hexagonal recess. I don't want to know what went on. There are these shiny golden balls on the bedposts. That must be brass. Wow, that really works. The ball simply plugged into the tube of the bedpost. Something's happened. Ugh. It's open, but I can't get excited about it. I don't want to see what's on these photos. Ugh. There's only Mrs. Biba in these pictures, but there could be other pictures of other women, and therefore lots of people with a motive. That, along with the blackmail letter, should easily convince the police. Fuller was a blackmailer. And worse, there must have been dozens of people who wanted him dead. Dozens of people with a motive, unlike Angelina. I'll get her out of jail with this.
not nice. And every time she goes out, Mrs. Baiba has to reckon with maybe seeing the guy who took the photos. Unbelievable how she must have hated him. But then her fear of everything being made public must have been even more so. It's repulsive, and a damn good motive, right? Indeed. But it doesn't mean that the Bibus have anything to do with the murder. Of course not. Look, I guess your people would find even more in Fuller's secret room. Then you'll have plenty of suspects, all with good motives. I've already sent some people over there. But all of this doesn't prove that it wasn't Miss Morgan. But she had no motive! Yes, she did. Th th that's him. That's the guy that followed me. Nice that you came, Mr... Reginald Boris is my name, Captain. I'm a private detective from England. I'm sure I can contribute a few things that will clear up this case quite considerably. That's what we like to hear. We have a few questions for you as it happens. For example, why you lured Angelina into a trap? Mr. Michaels. The important question is surely why? Why did Miss Morgan murder the photographer Fuller? Well, quite simple. She was also photographed by him. As you can see, not quite as revealing as the others, but I haven't got all of the photos. I'm sure your people will find other pictures that put it beyond all doubt. What the? Th th those are mine! I shot those pictures of Angelina yesterday afternoon! All right, calm down. What's going on here? You'd better ask him. He must have stolen these pictures from Angelina's hotel room. These pictures have got nothing to do with it. It's the same photo paper as the other ones. And I got them from Fuller. He said he had lots more. Oh, man. Lies! Well, we'll see about that. Darren, go and get some fresh air. Calm yourself down. Mr. Boris. Come with me, please. There are a few things we need to discuss. Why, certainly. And Angelina? She stays where she is, until we've cleared up this mess. But you... <sighs> we'll get in touch when we need your help. Good day. This can't be for real. You know, I believe you. You were right about Fuller, and there's something not quite right with this Detective Boris. Then go in there, arrest him, and release Miss Morgan already. It's not that simple. But it'll all become clear. In a few days, everything will be cleared up. Until then, you should just wait. And go visit your mother. Wait, a few days? A and give this asshole time to get new evidence? Yeah, right. Next thing you know, he'll, he'll frame her for the Kennedy assassination. I'm gonna find out what game he's playing. Good, but be careful. The end doesn't justify the means. You've already broken into Fuller's house. If you get caught doing something like that, you'll get it for real. Then you'd better stay away from me. He can only have gotten the pictures from Angelina's hotel room. I should have a look around there, regardless of what the police think. Get lost, you damn critters! Get off my veranda! The seagulls seem to like the veranda just as much as the hotel owner does. I gotta break up the bread, or else it's gonna make food for just one bird. I'll press a little around here.
Well, I can go up. Well, I can go up. Well, I can go up the stairs, but without the room. Got it. The key for room number five. Nice work. There were skilled craftsmen across the whole region all those years back. They brought all their experience and designs from Europe and supplied the whole of the states from here. This isn't exactly my taste. She only drank non-alcoholic drinks in the diner yesterday. Angelina is about as good with alcohol as I am. What's this then? I don't believe it. A, a microphone. A listening device. The bastards bugged Angelina. There's no cable on it. It must have a little transmitter, but such a tiny transmitter can't have much of a range. Hmm. That means there has to be an amplifier or a more powerful transmitter around here. A ventilation shaft could be a good hiding place for a radio set. I bet the hole leads right up to the roof. I knew it! A radio set. The bug only needs to transmit a few yards and then this powerful set amplifies the signal and sends it on to wherever. Apart from that, there's nothing else. Where have you come from? What do you think you're doing? I, uh... You can't just march through the rooms. This is a discreet, familial hotel. Where? Where is the key for room five? Miss Morgan's room. You've got it. I... Uh... Give it here. Immediately. Don't let the police hear about this heaven's sake. And now get out! I never want to see you here again! If you just don't! Man, was he upset or what? doesn't matter. I've got everything I wanted and I don't need to go back into the hotel again. Um... What's with my slide projector? Don't worry. Got it here. Is it broken? No, but old and battered as ever. What do you need the projector for anyway? You're blind. You just look after your own junk. Have you heard what happened to Fuller? Sure. The police was here. Wanted to know if I heard anything. Did you? I got ears like a lynx, but it was raining. When the rain falls on that tin roof out my window, I can't hear nothing else. You're an expert on radio equipment, right? Can you tell me what this is? Who the hell? Darren. Can you help me or not? It's, it's important. Hmm. Well, that's a plain old transmitter. Cheap Asian trash. I found that thing in a ventilation shaft in a young woman's hotel room. What kind of range does this thing have? Eh, uh, not far. If it's used in a room, a, a couple of miles at best. And it's not possible to find out where the receiver is, right? <sighs> that doesn't help at all. Damn. I know all the hams in the area, and none of them would hide that kind of thing in a lady's room. But... But I intercepted some strange Morse code last night. Long wave, 
just after 1800 hours, someone knew. He said something about a girl who is now safe. He also said he'd be back in touch today at 1800 hours. That could have been Reginald Boris. A foreigner? Uh, yes, and apart from that, perhaps Old Fuller's murderer, and someone who wants to frame an innocent party. And you want to stop that? Well, maybe there's a spark of decency in you yet. Can we track down Reginald if he transmits again at 1800 hours? Well, you bet. With directional antennas. I got one here. We'll have to build another one. Uh, we'll, we'll get his bearings from two different points, and then bang! We got him. What do you need for it? Oh, well, let me think. I've got a radio here. We can use that. I need a metal tube, a copper wire, at least a meter, and you'll need headphones and a compass to get the bearings right. You bring me that stuff, and I'll build you the direction finder. And hurry! There ain't much time till 1800. Uh, 1800 hours. That's 6 p.m., right? Oh, my God. All right, then. I need the compass. I'll have to sacrifice the telescope. I'll just borrow it. into the plastic insulation and pull it back carefully. And now, I have a real nice piece of copper wire. Here are all the things for the direction finder. Very good. I'll build it up right away. But, first the theory. You take the receiver down to the coast, somewhere near the hotel. You turn on the radio, I'll set everything up and don't fiddle with it. Then you turn the antenna slowly and listen for where the Morse code signal is the loudest. Look at the compass and write down the bearings and degrees where the antenna is pointing. Good. I'll do the same here with my receiver. Then we'll plot the bearings on this here map. Transmitter's located where the lines cross, understand? Yes, sir. Good. Now let me get on with it. So, let's see. Got it. Back to the junk shop. And? Do you have a bearing? Yes, sir. Bearing at 73 degrees. Very good. My bearing is 90 degrees. Go on. Plot the bearings. Let's see. Your shop is here, and you had a bearing of 90 degrees. I was roughly here. This damn... Of course! What is it? A boat! <sighs> Boris has got a boat. That's why no one here knows him, and why the police didn't find him. The lines cross a few hundred yards from the coast, about two miles to the east. Good work. Now you need a boat. One of those lobster fishermen owes me a favor. You can use his. 
and what should I do with it? Well, sail out there, of course. And serve myself up for a fight with Reginald Boris on his ship? Didn't you hear the message? He plans on coming back into town again tonight, looking for you. That's what he said? Huh. I must have missed that. Well, go on, then. You don't get many opportunities to be a hero. I trust the police least of all. I'd rather get hold of the evidence of Angelina's innocence myself. And this time, it'll all be watertight. A wooden paddle that looks pretty heavy. Why would you need something like that on a sailboat? Let's see. Wow, this is a cool model. Huh. What have we here? A file titled Willow Creek. I don't believe it. Why the hell does Reginald Boris have pictures on his computer of a place where my mother regularly receives money? Something very strange is going on here. The pictures of a big sailboat on a stormy sea. Maritime romanticism. There are hinges on one side of the frame. A safe. Hopefully it contains a few answers. They're photos of me. They're all from yesterday, me, me walking around town. This is me leaving the store. And here I am going to the hotel. And here, here I am with Angelina in the diner. Huh, that picture's been taken through the window. That Reginald fella must have been creeping about the whole time. Huh. I'll take them. Even though they'll probably be of no use. Cardboard folder. It looks really new. There's an A on the front. Huh. At the front of the folder is a small piece of transparent foil with lines on it. Strange. I'll take it with me. What else have we got here? Photos of Angelina. Some of them are clearly quite old. She can't be more than 13 or 14 years old in this one. And here she is as a kid. Huh. A note. New York. Boston. Perhaps... Perhaps that's her route? Yes. This proves that Boris has been following her for a while. I'll take the folder. Frame sheet of handmade paper. You can hardly read the writing, and there's some kind of wildly painted lines over it. The road to El Dorado is written at the bottom. Isn't that in South America? It might fit. Let's see.
The foil fits perfectly. It shows a route around the southern tip of Africa. The route is southwest, south, southeast, east, northeast, and northwest. Hmm. Here's a wind rose that you can turn. I guess the idea is the same as with Fuller's safe. But unfortunately, I don't have a stethoscope with me to listen to the mechanism. Right combination. Huh. A ring with an eye-catching symbol on it. Looks a bit Celtic. A tree or something. It's not gonna help me, though. A floppy disk. Labeled with Biddeford and today's date. That looks more like a clue. I should have a look at what's on it straight away. If the disc doesn't contain any critical information, then I have to keep searching. Either way, I should get a move on. I don't know how long Boris is gonna stay on land. wrong now. The battery's dead. And there's no electricity on the boat. All right. Let's see if I can do something about that. The cupboard looks like it's made of burl wood, but it can only be really a thin veneer. Otherwise, it'd be too heavy and expensive. All right. Few maritime maps, tools, screws, measuring instrument, and ah, a key. A flip up seat with a lock on it. Aha, uh -huh. that must be the ship's power generator. I guess the batteries are normally charged using a cable at the harbor. The generator's probably just meant for emergencies. Huh, completely dry. I need to pour in some gas. Life jackets, a lifesaver, a few ropes, a buoy, and a gas can. Just what I need. All right, ready for the next try.
very good, but also quite loud. Hopefully no one can hear the noise on land. Huh. Let's see if there's anything on this disc that'll shed some light on what's going on. Mrs. Michaels' medical records? What the... Mrs. Rebecca Michaels. Second and third degree burns on the hands, arms, and legs. Fractured back, partial cervical fracture, blah, blah, blah. Due to a bad fall. This entry is from 1973. R right after the car crash. Rather an alleged car crash. What does Reginald Boris want with my mother's medical records? Does he... Does he know her from her time in England? I'll, I'll deal with that later. Let's try and work on the Angelina thing first. Angelina... Angelina... Hey! Full of store. And there's someone standing in the shadows. It's... Mr. Biber. He must have found out about the blackmail and then lost it. And there's Angelina. She's going into the store. Oh! This is the proof. Fuller was already dead when Angelina arrived at the store. But Boris saw that Biber had murdered Fuller. Then he must have called Angelina and then the police afterwards. But why did he get her arrested? Was she in the way? In his search for... My mother? Or me? Ha! Good evening, Mr. Michaels. You! Stay away from me! That's very difficult on such a small boat, wouldn't you say? What do you want from me? It's all very complicated, believe me. But we'll have enough time to clear it up. We're both going on a little trip. I don't think so. Ah! Damn it! If you say so, most important thing is the disc is still okay. You saved me. I just wish they'd caught Boris. He'll resurface soon enough. I should've got back quicker, but the boat wouldn't go any faster. I still don't know what he actually wanted from us. And if you fly back to England on your own, who's gonna watch out for you then? Oh, it's nice of you to worry. But I've got to go. And Boris seemed to be after you and your mother, right? Nothing's going to happen to me. I still wish you'd stay here. Or that I could come with you. We've been through this already. You have to stay here with your mother until she gets better. You can come and visit me in a few weeks. By then I'll know more about the mysterious woman. What? What do you mean? I'm going to investigate. Willow Creek, Reginald Boris, about the time your mother was at the castle. Uh, listen to me. You are not gonna do that. Please, keep out of this. But I'm a historian. Digging into the past is just what I do. Don't worry, darling. I'm going to miss you. Anyway, I know who could save me if I get into trouble. Darren? Huh? They just called from the hospital. You should get over there straight away. My mom.
Mr. Michaels, it's, um, the doctor would like to speak to you. Has something happened? Just go through, please. Karen, I... Where's my mom? Your mom is... Your mom's heart failed this morning. What? No, 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 that's impossible. I really am very sorry. Mom! <gasps> Hello, this is Rebecca Michaels. Unfortunately, I'm not at home at the moment. Leave me a message, and I'll get back to you. Darren? Darren, are you there? He's here, Darren. Reginald Boris is here. I've... I went to Willow Creek. I couldn't resist. Please forgive me. I found out a few things about this place. It seems there's something like a conspiracy here, and I think Reginald Boris is part of it. I saw him today, and now... No. No. Go! Ah! Darren! Help me! Hello? Hello? Angelina! Wakey, wakey! We're there! So, this is it. The one and only hotel in this godforsaken place. I had to change trains in London and then sit for another 45 minutes in a cab. And now here, I'm in the middle of nowhere. The village of Willow Creek itself is a bit further down the road. But I ought to take a look around here first. Angelina must have checked into this hotel. Three flags hanging here. England, Great Britain, and the European Union. Huh. <laughs> the last one's gotta be there, just for the foreign tourists. Wow. The ivy must be at least a hundred years old. It's already climbed up the whole building. The hotel lobby's in there behind the tall windows. Very grand for such a small country hotel. Oh, a new guest! Welcome to Golden's Palace. My name is Murray. Uh, hello. I'm looking for a young woman who's spending some time here. Maybe you've seen her? Yes, maybe I have, but maybe I haven't. You have to understand, this is a discreet hotel. I can't talk about my guests. So, she's a guest here? As I said already, a discreet hotel. Almost dead, one could say. It's off-season right now. It'll get busier. This is the best hotel in Willow Creek, and a place with history. This was once the sanatorium of the dreaded Robert Gordon, the Dr. Frankenstein of Willow Creek. Oh, yeah? Yes, yes. 
He was the uncle of Samuel Golden, the maniac murderer. Everyone thought squeaky clean Sir Robert was a respectable doctor. But in reality, he conducted illegal experiments on the sanatorium's patients. Very nasty goings on. And then someone thought it would make a great hotel. Of course, of course. Immediately after the murders 12 years ago, the tourists came in throngs. They wanted to see everything. But where could they stay the night? There wasn't a hotel. So, I bought this building. The patients were taken away straight after the incident, of course. Some also escaped. So, anyway, I bought the house, had it renovated, and now it's the best hotel in the place. How many nights did you say you wanted? Actually, I just wanted to know if you've seen this young lady. Her name is Angelina Morgan. Now, I can't talk to strangers about guests. The hotel's reputation, you see. I see. And if I were a guest myself, then... Well, then, of course, we could have a little chat about who else has a room here at the moment. All right, then. A room, please. For, let's say, two nights to start with. Very well. That'll be ninety pounds. So, what about Angelina? Is she here? The young lady checked in here a few days ago. Room 13, right next to yours, sir. However, I haven't seen her since yesterday morning. Thank you. Uh, room 13, that's down this corridor? Yes, sir. Your room is number 12. You do, of course, understand that I can't let you into the lady's room. As you know, the hotel has a reputation to uphold. Huh. This takes me a step closer. I know Angelina was here. Perhaps I'll find some clues as to what she found out and who didn't like it. Hmm, a bottle of schnapps. Maybe I could grab it while Murray's not looking. Voila, a bottle of alcohol. Murray seems to have just been eating something. I'm guessing that he's the only employee in his hotel so he can't just go and leave his position at the counter to go and eat. The knife hasn't been used. I'll take it. Maybe I can still find a use for it. A stand with what looks like tasteless postcards from tourists. They show either pictures of the village or blood-stained knives. Here's one with a screaming woman on it. Huh. Willow Creek. I was here and survived. Willow Creek. Makes your blood freeze. Willow Creek. Home of murderers. <sighs> Unbelievable. You know, I can never be bothered with most postcards. But here, here's a card with a drawn map of the area showing the murder locations of 12 years ago all marked out. I could use the map to help me keep myself oriented. I'll take it with me. I'll put it on your bill. A card from the Willow Creek. As long as I don't have any leads, I'd better just give a look around here once again. Room 13. That's Angelina's room. And that's my room, number 12. First I'll get rid of this rucksack, and then I need to find a way to get into Angelina's room. Ah, <sighs> that's better. The idea is very much that you sit yourself in this armchair, Read one of the books from over there, while quietly smoking a pipe or a cigar. Judging by the ashtray, it looks like that hasn't happened for some time, though. It's sparkling clean. There's only a box of matches lying in it. 
Aladice matches. Sounds like there's still a few in here. There's a new... Oh no, can't be. The paper's already several weeks old. Probably so little going on here that Murray hardly ever gets back here to tidy up. Nothing's older than yesterday's paper, but I don't have to read it. I think I'll just take a few pages. Angelina, Angelina's room's locked. I need to get hold of the key somehow. What else can you tell me about Angelina? Hmm, don't know. Nice girl. Seems to be out a lot. Always went off for a couple of hours, then back to her room, then out again. Did you notice anything? Was she nervous? Afraid? No, not really. She seemed to be a bit stressed. Tense. And always in a hurry. That's just what young people are like. Did you call the police when she didn't come back last night? Why should I? She paid up front. Everything's fine. Oh yeah, everything's fantastic. She might be bleeding to death in the woods or, or in the hands of violent kidnappers, but she paid up front. Calm down. Nothing will have happened to her. Absolutely nothing's happened here for 12 years, unfortunately. Couldn't you perhaps give me Angelina's room key? If you buy the hotel and let me retire, then we can talk about it. And if I forget a 50-pound note on the counter, would you go outside to look at the pretty pictures on it in the daylight? Young man, this is a quality hotel. I can't and won't allow its reputation to be damaged. No one will notice. There's not a soul here. You can't bribe me, and that's that. What's that castle out there on the hill? That's the famous Black Mirror Castle, ancestral home of the Golden family. There are few buildings here that have a history as fascinating and blood-soaked. Why, what happened there? What didn't happen there, more like? Every imaginable abomination. Murder, torture, witch burning, dark rituals, devil worship, everything. <laughs> yeah, sure. And that's not just what you tell the tourists to make this place more interesting. <laughs> well, perhaps it's not quite that bad. But what the people say is true. That castle is cursed. That much is certain. <laughs> cursed. Just look at the Gordons. An ancient family that's going to die out. One blow of fate after the other. The latest events alone. Around 25 years ago, there was a fire in the castle, and Master Samuel lost his young wife in the flames. Twelve years ago, the eldest Gordon committed suicide. He jumped from the castle tower. After that came Robert's murder and Samuel's suicide. The last surviving Gordon is Lady Victoria. She's already about 90. When she dies, one of the oldest families in England dies with her. Sounds like bad luck, but not necessarily a curse. It is. The castle is cursed. It makes the people crazy. How else are you going to explain one Gordon after the other completely losing it? Some mental illnesses are hereditary. And if it's an old noble family, incest may also play a role. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or natural radioactivity, or poisonous groundwater. That's all far-fetched. It's a curse. Everyone knows that. What did you say this building used to be? The old Ashbury Sanatorium. The legendary, the gruesome, the unfathomable sanatorium of the crazy Robert Golden. I see. Sir Robert was Samuel Golden's uncle on his father's side. He lived in the castle and was, of course, like all Gordons, completely insane. He conducted experiments on the patients here in the sanatorium. Illegal experiments. Terrible experiments. And no one noticed? He mostly did it at night, alone. 
he only had one accomplice in the village, Dr. Herman. Both were murdered before their schemes were uncovered. But strange things have been happening since their deaths. People claim to have seen spectral apparitions in these corridors and sounds that come out of the ground. Sure, and that's probably written large on the front of your flyers, right? A couple of ghosts would surely be good for business. It's just a shame it's absolute moonshine. What can you tell me about this place? Willow Creek. It's the nest in which I was born, just like all the others you see around here. No one moves to here. Either you're born here and stay, or you're born here and leave. It can't keep hold of the youngsters anymore. They want to be in the city. The place is dying out. Is there anything special to see here? The museum, of course. I was significantly involved in setting it up. It's even on my land, which I've leased for a small, appropriate fee, of course. Go into the village. You won't miss it. We set it up once... once the flow of tourists dried up. You need to offer the people something, after all. We redesigned the rear part of the museum last year. Now it's got a lot more zip. It was my idea. None of the other people in the village have got any idea about business. <sighs> and... You have to speculate to accumulate. You're not going to attract tourists with a couple of clay pots and carpets, are you? How can you attract tourists? With a show! You need to give them something. We've got five gruesome murders here, an old family full of maniacs, a dark curse. There must be some capital in that. Doesn't seem to have worked all that well so far. Alas, no. Many didn't get involved. Said you should let the dead rest in peace. We won't get anywhere like that. Hmm. Of course not. During the first few months after the murders, it was looking really good. The papers wrote about our murders all the time. Loads of free publicity. They came from all over. Buses full. But then, well, the hype died down. Ooh, how tragic. Hey, perhaps a couple of people should be killed every season. Then you'll get more press. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to worry about it. You haven't invested all your savings. But I'll have the last laugh. This place is gonna be on the up again. Thanks for the chat, Murray. My pleasure. I've got the crumpled newspaper in the middle, next to the leaves which shone so wet. The newspaper's lit. The leaves next to it are just charring. They're not gonna burn, they're too damp for that. Uh, Murray, there's smoke outside. I hope the hotel isn't gonna burn down around our heads. Bugger! Oh! As long as Murray's outside, put... Now we'd like to have that. The key for room number 13. Hopefully I might find some evidence of Angelina's whereabouts in her room. Those little brats! They've no idea how dangerous that is. They yeah, should... the young are really bad. What 
what's that? One of the pictures I took of Angelina. That's gotta be a clue for me. So it is. There are a few white notes on the back of the picture. Let's see. There, you can see a black script. Oh, of course, a real old trick. Angelina must have used lemon juice to write with. The heat makes the clear juice turn black. Ouch! Ah, oh, damn it. The match is burned out and there's only a tiny corner of the text that's turned visible. A few words have appeared in one corner. It's the place worn by the heat. I need the whole note, and to do that I need to warm the citric acid. But how? The glass is half full. A thick, heavy, and very old-fashioned bedspread. There are woolen threads around the edges. I can't take the cover, but I can take the wooden thread as a souvenir. It wouldn't be the first time something like that had come in useful. Great. The woolen thread is acting like a wick and soaking up the alcohol. Looks like I've rediscovered the world's oldest artificial light source. Awesome! My little fire's lit. It was working like that 10,000 years ago, too. Now what do I do with it? So, let's see... Ah, at last. There's Angelina's message. Sunday, 1600. I don't, I don't know, know what's supposed, supposed to be, be so, so special, special about, about Willow. Willow Creek. It all seems so forlorn, poor, and desolate. Hopefully I won't have to disappoint Darren. He's helped me so much, and I only now hope that I can help him, too. Sunday, 9 p.m. That Porter Murray is a damned shark. He had money off me for every single bit of info. I'm not doing that again. I'll go to the library tomorrow, and there's supposed to be a town museum, too. Maybe I'll pick up something there about Darren's castle. Monday, 11 a.m. Black Mirror was built in the 14th century by the two brothers, Marcus and Mordred Gordon. The brothers argued and virtually waged war with each other. To this day, descendants of the Gordon line still inhabit Black Mirror Castle. They will, however, soon die out. The last young Gordon died 12 years ago, having committed suicide. Monday, 2 p.m. I've got something on the tree symbol that Darren discovered on Boris's ring. The symbol is mentioned in the Chronicle of the Gordon family. I also stumbled across it in the library. It's the symbol of a secret society, a kind of sect that wants to summon up dark powers and uses corpses in the process. What if Boris is one of them? Monday, 4 p.m. I found out in the pub that people believe there's a curse on Black Mirror Castle and the Gordon family. Maybe I'll change the topic of my degree thesis. I'd much rather write about accursed castles, though I can't see my good prof Hubbard being too thrilled about the idea. Monday, 9 p.m. He's here. Reginald Boris is here in Willow Creek. I've just seen him sneaking about the hotel. What should I do? Is he here because of me? Now, of all times, right when I want to investigate the passage. I'm not going to let myself be stopped, but I... I'll send off some insurance. Oh, man. Reginald Boris. 
Angelina had been doing some research, and Boris had caught her at it. Now, he's holding her prisoner, and... Does he want to lure me to him? In Maine, he wanted to take me on a journey. Is this all about me? Whatever the reason for all this might be, Angelina doesn't have anything to do with it. She's gotten to danger because she wanted to help me. It's my fault if something happens to her. I... I ought to go into the village and listen around. Angelina was there. But I need to be careful. I don't know who might belong to this order that Angelina warned me about. A completely normal tube TV, like most folks have at home. A little cupboard. Looks rather like an antique. And inside, there's... Huh. Sleep-in potion. Now, could that be Angelina's? Maybe she was having nightmares from all that business. <sighs> what the hell have I gotten her into? all know that old one. What do you mean? A young, attractive lady is carrying a stack of books and uh, lets them fall at the feet of the hero. Excuse me? I'm the librarian here, so it's quite right that I should be carrying books around the place. Young? Attractive? Well, I'll accept that. But why do you consider yourself to be a hero? You're the librarian? Oh, then you can definitely tell me something worth knowing about this place, Miss, uh... Valley. You're American? Darren Michaels. Do I really sound American? Oh, yes. Now let me see. Your accent is non-rhotic. That is, you don't sound the phoneme R at the end of a syllable, or before consonants. And you have hard A sounds. That's the famous Boston accent. Awesome! I, I really do come from Boston. I've spent half my life in books, so something has to have stuck. So then you can probably tell a damn Yankee something about Willow Creek? What do you want to know? I'm uh, staying at the Gordon's Palace Hotel. Really? You're letting yourself get ripped off by that old so-and-so, Murray? The building is supposed to have had a terrible past. That's true. It would seem that all of the male Gordons were a little bit crazy. The curse of the Gordons. Please don't tell me you believe in all that hockum. I never used to. <laughs> you English. You like your ghost stories and all that a little too much. That's the obligatory village pub. It never was a great place, but since the old landlord left, it really has gone downhill. The new landlord is Tom, the chap at the chili stall. The fair will be here for a few more days yet, but I wouldn't bet that it'll be coming back again. Well, is there anything about Willow Creek that's worth knowing? Not a lot. There must have been a settlement there for a good thousand years or so. They found remains dating back that far. Yeah, a stone circle in a forest. So I've heard. Yes, there's one of those. It really only kind of got going around the 13th century when there was a monastery built in the neighborhood. Also a church and the first part of a castle. And more recently? You're talking about the murders. That's 12 years ago now. Let's not talk about those.
Back there by the town hall is my empire, the library. Perhaps it's because there's otherwise so little going on here. There are plenty of people who like to and who do read a lot. Sadly, often all the wrong things. Trashy stuff and the cheapest pulp lit are in high demand. The castle nearby, uh, isn't that the famous Black Mirror castle? It certainly is. Its inhabitants have influenced things around here for centuries. Sometimes for the good, sometimes rather more negatively. How do you mean that? Everything around here belongs to the Gordons. In the old days, virtually everything that went on here was all decided in the castle. Just what could happen in the village, and what could not. And who lives in the castle today? Lady Victoria Gordon, the last of the Gordons, her old butler Bates, and her late brother's widow, Lady Eleanor. I think there are a few other servants, too. That's the museum. If you want to know more about Willow Creek, then that's the place to be. At least in the front bit. What's in the back? The newly opened Black Museum. Cheap special effects animation. Horror and titillation at others' expense. What's wrong with the Black Museum? Why should you get so wound up about it? It's not about informing people. Nothing to do with knowledge. It's about putting blood and suffering on display. I'm afraid that's what folks are interested in. Because they want a gawk. These are the same people who would rather photograph an accident than help out. They don't share in any of the misfortunes of those behind the spectacle. Can you help me with a symbol? A, a tree where the roots reach around and up into the branches. Did that mean anything to you? Where, uh, where do you know that from? You know something about it? You ought to forget about it again as soon as possible. I stumbled across it in Maine, and now I'd like to know if it... Maine? You come... But you said Boston. I, um, I've still got something to finish. G good day. Uh, Miss Valley, listen! And she's gone. What was that all about? The flight was supposed to be cheap. But the airport is in the middle of nowhere. The taxi here was well, more expensive than a private jet. Calm down, Albert. Uh, and on top of that, your friend's guidebook is totally out of date. You were happy that we didn't have to buy one. No one could have guessed that so much would change here within a few years. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shut up, okay? A small, colorful tube. Looks like bubble mixture. That's mine. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I just wanted to have a quick look at it. Broken display cabinet. Nothing in it, of course. It says Black Ball of Destiny on the sign. All right, I'm apparently standing right next to Samuel's corpse.
There's just that big book in the cabinet. What does it say on the plate? Gordon Family Chronicle. Hey, that might be interesting. Hmm, this page is full of medals. But there's a bit of text there too. And therefore, a brotherhood should operate in the spirit of this great man for all time. It shall serve beyond the dominion of the church, free of all the conventions, and over and above all earthly jurisdiction. Commit yourselves only to your one aim, that you may take control of that higher power. Our great strength lies in our secrecy. We stand in the darkness, in the shadows, and look into the light, invisible to all who may impede us. For if no one knows we exist, then we cannot be stopped. Therefore, my brothers, hold to these rules. The members of the order shall not be known to one another. Only the high priest of the order shall be able to call every member by name and rank. At order assemblies, every brother shall be masked so that none may recognize him. No outsider may be informed by the order, neither purposely nor through carelessness. Be wary, my brothers. Behave inconspicuously, but be wary. The day on which you must prove yourselves will come sooner than you think. Hmm, not very fruitful. I still don't know what the order's aim is, but it seems to be one single big aim. It's got to be on the pages before these. I've got to get that chronicle somehow. A god. He looks a bit simple-minded. Hi. Are you the god here? Oh, hello. hello. My, my name is Bobby. Oh, uh, hello, Bobby. I'm Darren. Hi, Darren. That big book over there in the display case, uh, the Gordon's Chronicle, what can you tell me about that? Everything about the Gordon family's in it. Lady Vic... Victoria g gave it to the museum, but it's only allowed to be sh shown here, not back there where it's spooky. I can imagine that Lady Victoria doesn't want to see her, her family chronicle in that crappy, ghoulish black museum. May I have a closer look? I'm not allowed to take it out of the showcase. Have you got a key for it? Y yes, Mrs. Puffed. Trusts me. I've got k keys for everything. <laughs> Except the front door. And Mrs. Puff always puts, puts the alarm on because of the insurance, she says. So the Chronicle is never taken out of the display case. Perhaps I can ask Mrs. Puff myself. No. The, the book mustn't be taken out. Lady Victoria has forbidden it. She says it's an evil book. So you've got a key for the display case, but you're not allowed to open it. Exactly. What can you tell me about the museum? I think it's n nice. I don't really like it back there, though. It's so s spooky. Do lots of people visit? Y y yes. So sometimes f five or or six a day. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> um, has has anyone ever broken in? N no, I keep a watch. Nights as well. N no, there there's an alarm. Is that your wonderful bubble blowing kit? Oh, yes. I love blowing bubbles. But I've blown so many today that it's empty. Maybe I can get some more soapy water for you. No, thanks. 
It's nearly closing time. I'm not in the mood anyway. I'm too hungry. Why is that? I had no breakfast. Tom didn't buy any bread. We've got no money because the pub isn't doing well. And now there's this expensive stall as well. But you still need to eat. Tom doesn't eat much. Beer's just as good as bread, he says. Yeah, I bet. Tell me, Bobby, uh, the cabinet back there, has it been broken long? Yes, Darren. For four weeks of a day. How did it happen? I d- don't know. One morning I c- came in, and it was j- just b- broken. So someone broke in and stole what was in it? Yes. I c- c- completely f- forgot about that. But it, it's not so bad. There was t- just a bowl in it. What kind of bowl? A big b- black one. Thanks for the info. You're welcome, Darren. How about I get you something to eat? Oh, that would be very nice of you, Darren. Let's see what I can do. All right, I'm out of here. See you around. See you soon, Darren. A chilly stall, a bit tatty, and it doesn't look like there's too much going on. Hi there. What would you like, normal or extra? What? Normal chilly or extra hot chilly? Hmm, I'm not too sure just now. Nobody gets paid for just standing around. All those other folks can wait. (laughs) Not exactly backwards and coming forwards, are we? I like it. What do you want? What can you tell me about Miss Valley? She's a nutter. She's been in the loony bin. She belongs back in there too, that's what I say. So, what's wrong with her? She never got over what happened to her brother. So? Come on then. What about it? Twelve years ago. A series of murders. The murder that caused the biggest sensation all across the country was when little Vic Valley was killed. A little boy was murdered by Samuel Gordon in a stone circle in the forest, and in a very nasty way, too. That's really awful. And Miss Valley... She's the sister. She found him the next day. (laughs) It really screwed her up. Stopped eating, didn't speak to anyone anymore. When she swallowed a load of rat poison, she was committed. (laughs) Oh, jeez. And in spite of all that, she's come back out now and is back living in Willow Creek of all places? Turned up here again a few years back. The doctors reckoned it would be better for her, but once you've had roof damage, then, <laughs> well, it's always got a leak, isn't it? That's what I say. I'd like a portion of chili, please. Now you do. Normal or all? If I'm right, then there's only one pot anyway. (laughs) Hot then. You called it right. Oh, the mighty lord is generous to the lower born. I need to get on. Uh. The clock on the tower is huge. However, it seems to have stopped.
I got you some chili. I hope you like it. Oh, yeah. But I've got no money. Don't worry. It's on me. Oh, thanks, Darren. But I will give you something too, then. Uh, thanks. The madman Samuel Gordon murdered the respected Dr. Heinz Hermann in a bloody frenzy. He decapitated the popular doctor in his own home, near to the village. This seems to be about the murder of a boy. The youngest victim of the series of murders was the 12-year-old Vic V. He was brutally murdered at a stone circle in the forest, not far from the village. Here are some pictures of the stone circle. Witness accounts, a statement from the police, newspaper clippings. It looks like people assumed it was a ritual murder at first. Heavy metal Satanists in murderous frenzy. A shredding machine? What's that all about? Shredding machine from the Garden of Black Mirror Castle. Who do the mysterious traces of blood on the inside of the shredding machine belong to? What kind of gruesome stories could this machine tell us about its former owner? In what kind of bloodthirsty crime did it play an incisive role? A mystery that will probably never be solved. B.S. Looks like a cross. I study physics. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Darren. So, are you full now? Yes, was delicious, really hot. And you still don't want to blow bubbles? I do, but I, I don't have any more bubble mixture. Should I get some for you? Oh, uh, okay. All right, I'm out of here. I'll take that with me, okay? Yeah, okay. As long as Bobby's sitting there, I'm not going to get my hands on the key in his jacket pocket. 
Eddie would have fun with this shelf. There are normal plates, painted plates, decorated plates, and glasses with soil. I don't really want to know anymore. I don't think that's part of it. Huh. There must be some... Yeah, liquid soap. I'll put some in the tube. That's it. An old rope. It's wrapped around the pole up there, and the other end disappears into the canal. I can't make out where it leads. The water's too dirty. Aha! A little bucket. Perhaps one of the residents wants to save money by collecting some of his water from the canal. The bucket is full of canal water. The bucket is full of... It's full. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Darren. Look, Bobby. I filled up the bottle with soapy water. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. <laughs> Dear visitors, it is 8 p.m. The museum is now closing. Please make your way to the exit. We would like to thank you for your visit and look forward to seeing you again tomorrow from 11 a.m. Ah, damn it! Hi, Darren. We are closing now. I heard. You c c can c come back tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. See you then. See you then, Darren. Damn, I haven't got the key for the main door. I guess I'll have to wait till tomorrow. Get out of here! Huh? You're putting us all in danger. You are death! Leave me alone. It's the curse. The curse! It's gonna get you! Get out of here! Death! I told him! Great. So I'm death. That's the only piece of information I've picked up on this trip so far. And now... Back to the hotel? Or is there anything else for me to find out here? Oh, uh, hello, Miss Valley. Uh, it's a small world. Darren! Nice to... Uh, <laughs> yes, who, who'd have thought it? Um, is everything all right? Me? Yes, why? I mean, why not? You seem a bit nervous. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just with Murray about... I just see ghosts. It's... Uh, it's just 
The twelve years, you understand. Uh, no. <laughs> and how could you? You aren't... You, you, I mean, every twelve years... Every twelve years, something terrible happens. In the village, in the castle, in the forest. Dreadful things. Miss Valley, can I somehow... Oh, <laughs> oh no, please excuse me. It's just that a lot has happened recently, and I thought... I thought... Never mind. No, no, no. What did you think? And what's it got to do with this 12-year this cycle? It's got nothing to do with you, fortunately. I have to go. Miss Valley, I... What's wrong with her? She seems to have some serious problems. But so have I. Still no trace of Angelina. Perhaps I'll get some brilliant idea tonight. Good evening, Murray. What have you got there? A letter for your friend. A letter for Angelina? Unlikely. Who knew that she was here? But that's what's written on it. Miss Angelina Morgan, Golden's Palace. It was posted somewhere very close to here. Yesterday, I would assume. Will you give me the letter? It could be important. Indeed, it could. Important for Miss Morgan. Give me the damn letter. I gotta... You've got to restrain yourself, young man. This letter is addressed to Miss Morgan. And I'm not going to breach the sanctity of the post. To... Murray! Angelina has been missing since yesterday. No one in the village has seen her. Maybe she's been kidnapped. Have you considered that? Perhaps she's on a day trip and doesn't want anything more to do with you. Have you considered that? I must think of the hotel's reputation. I'm not going to give you the letter. But... <sighs> Is there anything else I can do for you, sir? Thank you. You've done enough already. There goes my night's rest. I've got to have that letter. It's going to move things on. I can feel it. A wooden clock with a glass cover and some car... Poor crazy loser. Hey! What's all that supposed to be at the museum? Hey! You know me? You! Are the Antichrist! Yeah, yeah, and, and you're just a little soft in the head, right? You can't deny it. It's in you. It's in your veins. In your heart. In your head. What's in me? The evil spirit. Oh, that's enough. Your head is full of crap. Marinated in alcohol. Can you feel it? The menace? The evil? Oh, get off. <laughs> I don't feel any. I don't feel any need to talk to the guy. Good evening, Bobby. Hi, Darren. About the black ball. Yes. Did the police come? No. Mrs. Puff said they aren't interested in in that. 
Oh. Well, uh, who is interested in it then? Mrs. Valley, I think. She looked at it. Thank you, Bobby. Are you the guard here, Bobby? Yes. I have to m make sh sure that everything runs sh sh shape here. An important job. Y yes. Mrs. Puffed. Of course. It I'm very ha happy that I can work here. Tom, from the chili stand over there? Oh, you shouldn't worry about what he says. But, but he's my brother. He looks after me, and I'm a big burden, he says. What does Tom do for you that makes you such a burden? Oh, he does a lot. I'm allowed to stay at his place and help in the pub. Does he pay you? No. Tom doesn't have m much money. He says I cost too much because I eat too much. But now I give him the m money that I get here, then it's perhaps not so bad anymore. He takes all of your money so you can live at his place. I don't find that fair. It's okay. It's better than having to do those other things again. What kind of things? They used to make me help him d doing b bad things. I, I don't like it. I'm a guard. G guards can't steal. Tom stole things, and you had to help him. Oh, no. No, I d didn't say that. Oh, no. Bobby, it's okay. I didn't hear a thing. Thank you, Darren. Tell me, uh, these things that you had to help your brother with. I don't do that any anymore. It's all right, Bobby. You don't want to do anything illegal, but I but I have to crack a lock, and I don't know how. I don't know how either. Tom knows that kind of thing. I only kept watch and c carried things. All right then. I'll ask Tom. Tom shouldn't do bad things anymore either. I'm earning money now as well. Don't worry. I, I won't ask him to do anything illegal. Tom! Huh? I need to open a locked cupboard. Could you help me with that? Me? What makes you think that? Uh, Bobby said something. The fat idiot ought to keep his gob shut. Now then, uh, can you help me out? Call a locksmith. You can buy drink from me, nothing else. Let's have a beer, Tom. Sure, if you're all paying for them both. Just because I own the place doesn't mean I drink for free. Sure, that's a no-brainer. What's up? Why aren't you drinking? Uh, I'm not so fast. Haha, <laughs> yanks. Can't handle proper beer, eh? Tom, you d didn't want to have a drink today. Shut your gob, Spacko. You're supposed to be real handy, so I've heard. There's something in that. My dad had a workshop. I used to help him a lot. I was already tuning mopeds even at ten years old. Really? <laughs> I've got two left hands. I can't even crack a simple lock. <laughs> nice dry. But I'm not that boozed up. And I'm not an idiot like him over there. Why don't you have yourself another beer? It's on me. You don't have to ask me twice. Please. Don't. Now tell me, Tom, uh, just theoretically speaking, how could I crack a lock in an old safe? They're not so easy to crack. For a start, you need the right tool. And that would be... 
A lockpicking tool. Aha. And only theoretically speaking, I could get one of those from you? Do you think I'm a burglar? I think you'll want the 50 pounds that I'll give you for it. Get out of it. Go on. Off with your mate, Bobby. You make a lovely couple. A right pair of tots. 70 pounds? I want 200 quid. I haven't got that much. Loser. Then you're not getting that too. You're all losers. Just using me. I'd like to bet you couldn't drink three pints back to back. You pay, I'll prove I can. Okay, go. There ya. I somehow suspected that wouldn't be a problem for ya. Are you a burglar, Tom? What bollocks? It's all lies! You don't get decent people stealing. Exactly. Then you also don't need a lockpicking tool then, do you, Tom? Peace off, you wanker! Get out! Give me some peace! Off you go! And take that idiot with you too! I'm only going once you've given me that tool. Here, 50 pounds, and I'll bring it back to you. It's not my fault, you know. It's Bobby. If he wasn't like he is, things would be better. They all left me on my own. They only left me that animal. How could a decent person get all like that, which starts a millstone around their neck? The tool, Tom? Not by fault. I'll take him home. I'm really sorry, Bobby. It's okay, Darren. Ah. <sighs> I feel like the world's biggest asshole. it. Sweet dreams. Can I help you? Uh, no. Uh, no thank you. I'm tired and I'm gonna go to bed now. Very well. I'll give him a couple of minutes. Excellent. He's fast asleep. Murray's sleeping, and I've got the lockpicking tool. I'm sure I can get... Murray's sleeping. I've got to bend the wire so that the individual locking pins are arranged in a line. After that, the lock should then open.
That's it. The lock's open. That's it. A letter addressed to Angelina Morgan. Oh, you'd better be worth it. A sealed letter. Angelina's name's on it. It was posted yesterday. Locally around here. I ought to read it. It could get me somewhere. Let's see. If anyone's reading this, then something's gone wrong. My, My name, name is Angelina, Angelina Morgan, Morgan, and I'm gathering information about Black Mirror Castle, the Gordon family, and a secret society. I feel under threat, and am being followed by a man called Reginald Boris. Please contact the police and Darren Michaels in Biddeford, Maine, USA for further information. I've heard scratching noises coming from beneath my room. I'm scared. I have discovered a space under the floor and was able to decipher the code. The solution was known by two storytelling brothers from Germany. GFT 62 17 1 25. I'm going to throw in this letter and ask Murray for another room. Darren, if you're reading this letter, I've really tried. So I'd like to thank you here for your help. I love you. She... No. I would break down if anything happened to her. Noises under her room. Reginald Boris creeping about the hotel. Two storytelling brothers? The bed looks old-fashioned, but not uncomfortable. But I really can't allow myself a break until I found Angelina. Huh. The bed's a little to one side. As though it's been pushed around. Maybe there's something under there. Aha. Uh -huh. Now then, the carpet under the bed has been torn up. And there seems to be some kind of metal cover there. I need to take a closer look at this. How was that again? Two storytelling brothers from Germany. And here's a book. Grimm's Fairy Tales, that's gotta be it. There are 15 selected fairy tales in the contents. The Frog King or Iron Henry? Huh. GFT-12, Rapunzel. And so on, up to GFT-187. That's exactly what's in Angelina's letter. GFT and then a few numbers. I'll take the contents page with me. Shame about the book. But nobody would have read it in the next hundred years anyway. Yep, that's how it's done. I've got them. Two 1.5 volt batteries. There it is. Uh, kind of round metal cover. It was hidden under the carpet. Let's see.
That's it. I heard a quiet click. Oh, a disgusting stench. That's got to be the sewers. Or a hole that's being used as a sewer. It's pitch black. I can't tell how deep it is. But I think I have to go down there. Angelina's being held prisoner there somewhere. I know it. You can't be sick. He's fast asleep, like a baby. Hey, my man. Wake up. Uh, how? What? Nah, it's about time. What, uh... What can I do for you? We want another room. The whole corridor stinks! Of sewage! I, uh, um, uh, of course. What the? A cheap plastic mask of... Samuel Gordon, toy knife with bloodstained blade. And the worst thing is that you can bet that some of my fellow humans actually buy this stuff. And what's this thing supposed to be? Huh. The original soul key. Summon dark forces and scare the pants off your friends. Lights up in three different colors. Gruesome sound effects. Hellish fun. Batteries not included. I can't get my head around it. Huh. Lights up in three different colors. Oh man. I hate to buy this thing, but I need light, and I need it now. An excellent choice, sir. A tribute to your good taste. Just shut it. The batteries fit, and I've got light. So... Let's go down into the underground. It really is the sewers. Pretty ancient for sure. More than a hundred years old. I can see water, and there's some steps in the wall. This is not an inviting place. There's a metal bar on the wall. I'm taking it with me. You just never know.
stinks. piece of timber about a foot and a half long. exactly know what all these grates are for. Maybe they're here to stop all the big pieces of floats in. Or they're here to stop folks breaking into houses from the drains. I can't open the grate with the wooden beam. Seems to be holding. A real dream. Angelina will be able to tell from a hundred yards off that I'm coming to a rescue. If Angelina is here, then she's definitely got to be on this side of the grate. which goes off downwards at an angle and hangs here. That's a piece of fabric. Could be from a blouse. And it doesn't look like it's been hanging all that long. I hope it's not Angelina's. But whose else could it be? The pipe leads steeply downwards. I can't see where it ends. It's big enough to climb into. Is she... Is she down there? Angelina! Angelina! <sighs> Nothing. I just hope that the pipe doesn't get any narrower down there, and that I can't find a way back outside. Damn slippery, as though somebody had greased the pipe with... Ah! Ah! Oh! Damn. Oh. 
As if someone has put oil all over the pipe. Oh, the stupid... Huh. I've still got the camera. The flash might help. That's definitely no longer the sewer. But what's that here? That's the soul key. Or what's left of it. It shattered into lots of little pieces. That's... Hmm. It, it feels like rough fabric, but much heavier. And it's very long. A hose. Must be a hose. A metal thing. A bucket. Uh, there's... Ugh. There's something slimy in it. Oil. Stale old oil. It almost looks like a bunker. Or... Prison? There's something like a metal door here. Some kind of handle. But the door won't open. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do with that. What's that? Something soft. A cloth. I've got it. That's the pipe that I slid down. I can feel a slippery substance on the floor. There's something very cold lying here. Metal, a, a pole or a tube. It really is a tube, about 18 inches long and quite heavy. I'll dip the cloth in the oil. Okay, it's drenched in oil, just like my hand. Ugh, the thick oil slowly running down the bar. But the cloth ought to hold. I've stuffed a corner into the opening of the tube. I'll stick it here in the wall. I don't really want hot oil running over my fingers. Here we go. My last match. Very good. Two huge metal tanks. Perhaps for fuel or oil. Could also be water tanks. No wonder I couldn't open the door in the dock. It's been blocked with a pole. And it's a sliding door. The metal rails on the wall and floor give that away. That would suggest that I'm in some kind of a bunker. They're usually sliding doors in bunkers because you can still open them after an explosion. Of course, the door won't open with that there. I'll take it out of the way. A few loose wires are hanging out of the box. Looks as though they've been pulled out on purpose. I'll stick them. Perhaps I can open the door with that. So let's see, 
Oh, there's even a light switch. This one here must be the switch for the door. The label makes it somewhat easier. You see? It works. A big, dark room and bars. I can hardly make anything out. We've been expecting you, Darren. What is this? Who are you? One day, you will be our guest. What are you gonna do? What have you done with Angelina? No. No! I'm going now. By the way, escape is impossible. This is an old Second World War bunker. There are meter-thick concrete walls, steel, and rock between you and freedom. We'll come for you in a few days, Dan. I wish you a pleasant stay. Damn it! What do you want from me? Why did you have to use Angelina as bait? Why her? I'm gonna find you. Ugh. Looks like a screwdriver. What's that doing here? A chain that's about two yards long. That's one of those things you can light gas with. The metal part is rubbed with a kind of flint and then makes sparks. Huge padlock, quite old with a large keyhole. It's still very strong, even though it's old. I won't be able to break it open. I could use a welding torch right now, or, hmm, huh, welding powder. It's a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum powder. That stuff burns at almost 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit and can easily melt iron. And iron oxide is in rust. There's enough of that here. Good. I hope I can get enough rust off here. collected the powder on the pages of the storybook. Yeah, that should be enough. Looks like ready meals in aluminum trays. That's not the kind you'd get in the supermarket. Looks more like it's a to-go tray. I'll just take one. Right. I'll carefully scrape the aluminum off with the knife. Now this could take a while. Alright. I've mixed the aluminum powder with the powdered rust. It's sure not the greatest welding powder, but it ought to do for the lock.
That's it. The Weldon powder's in the lock. I shouldn't let the flame burn too long. Who knows how long the gas will last. Good. It's lit. I'll have to hurry up. It's not gonna burn forever. Alright then. Real careful now. It's really evil stuff. The wicked thing is, it can burn without oxygen. That means you can't put it out with sand, for example. And if you pour water on it, the water is broken down by the heat, creating oxygen, or hydrogen, or oxyhydrogen, explosive gas. Everything explodes and superheated droplets fly everywhere. There's been some serious accidents. So it's not really something to try at home. But this was an emergency. I'll put the light on for... That was easy. That's a... Uh, no idea what that is. Hmm. It says here that it's a rubber dinghy with a built-in compressed air capsule. You pull the ripcord and the dinghy inflates within seconds. Phew. It must have been the cutting edge of technology back then. I know I'm gonna regret this. Oh my god. Angelina's pursuer, Reginald Boris. He's been stabbed to death. Ugh. Perhaps. Uh, perhaps I'll find some clues to what happened to Angelina. Don't let it happen. <clears throat> you have to stop the evil. God damn it. This can't be for real. This can't be for real. Is that in his breast pocket? Oh, gee, looting a corpse, just what I needed. But if it helps Angelina. Okay, I've just gotta do it. Hmm, sounds like a poem. But this is just half of it. The paper's torn. Days be done, Gordon's son, hanging long and grow, the light and in sight. I've no idea what that means, but I'll take the paper. And there's something else. Insulation tape. Oh, that's it. Luckily, there's nothing else here. The metal locker must be about 50 years old, like most things here. I'm surprised that everything is kept so well. The thick walls probably keep things preserved. What 
What have we got here? Whoa! A stick of dynamite! Hmm... Does 50-year-old dynamite still work? Or... Does it work too well and explode in my hands? <sighs> okay... <sighs> Alright then... I'll leave the other stick here for... There's a box... Hmm... These are cables with igniters... Presumably for dynamite... I'll take one of the cables with me. I don't need any more cable. The metal door closed behind me when the guy pulled one of these levers. Let's see... Aha! I don't see any reason to close the door. I'll leave it open so there's a way for me to get back. Huh. A pressure hatch like the ones you see in submarine movies. Looks old, but isn't rusty yet. Huh. A hose. Quite thick. The kind that firefighters use. I guess it's been lying around here for years. It probably won't last much longer. An old box. Let's see. Magnesium flares. I'll take them. Let's see... much to see. Oh, it smells like stagnant water and rust. This could be some kind of water storage or tank or something. There's a pair of gloves and a wrench. I'll take them both with me. is bolted from outside. It's a huge armored door. I can't break something like this open. I'll have to look for another way. The people who are living in this bunker seem to have left half of the things behind. There are bottles, bo boards, a broken lamp, and an old-fashioned detonating device. It's for detonating explosives, like the ones they used to use in quarries and mines. You turn the crank handle to build up an electric charge. When you press the button, it fires an igniter cap at the end of the wire. 
I'll have to position the stick of dynamite and attach the fuse cable first. A fire hose with metal... Not exactly light. A hatch. It leads back downwards. But that could be my way to freedom. It's not moving. The hatch is very rusty, probably because of the water down here. You know, sometimes the only thing that helps is brute force. Okay, very carefully. As soon as electricity flows through the wire, the igniter caps fire, exploding the stick of dynamite. Hopefully that's enough to blast the hatch open. Alright, I'll wrap the ends of the two wires around the contacts. The wire is connected to the stick of dynamite in the detonator. Everything's ready for the explosion. You know what? I've always wanted to do this. Damn! There's hardly a scratch on it. It's ripped the handle clean off, but most of the energy from the explosion has just dissipated. Hopefully the second stick. Another fuse cable. I hope that works. Okay, very carefully. The dynamite should blast the concrete gutter from the ceiling once and for all. Wrap the end of the two wires around the contacts again. <sighs> and let's try again. This time it has to work. I can't move it, it's too heavy. Sure enough, it's penetrated the hatch. There's some kind of pipe down there. It leads downwards. It would be big enough for me, but I can't see where it leads. And I can't squeeze past the piece of concrete. There are metal loops on the rubber dinghy. I'll hook the chain onto it. The boat is attached to the chain, 
which is wrapped around the piece of concrete. That might work. And up it goes. there's the way out, but there's no ladder here. I'm guessing that the room up there is the one behind the steel door, but I can't get at the grate. The concrete beam has broken off a piece of the wall here, and a few wires are sticking out. I think they're alive. I'll wrap the gloves with insulating tape. It'd be best to bend the electric wires out of the pipe and into the tank room. Oh, get out of here. <sighs> All right, that's that. I've joined the two short hoses into a long one. All right then, I'll put the end in the opening. It's just long enough. All right then, let's flood the pipe. That should be enough. Working. Keep going, keep going. Just one more. Oh, that's it. Just in time. An old wagon, like what used to be used in mines. It appears to have been built to transport heavy loads. It looks very solid and heavy. Huh, one of the wheels is missing. Perhaps that's why it was out of service. I bet it opens the door to the main room. really be a coincidence if that fits, but I guess I need some luck sometimes too. It could really fit. It's a little smaller than the other wheels, but it's just as solid.
Let's see. It works. <laughs> Damn it. That's it. The planks aren't quite as robust as I thought. Weird. One of the planks is broken. Fortunately, the others are thicker and have lasted. There's a shaft down there. I can't see the floor. I can just see darkness after a few feet. I'll move the planks to the wall over there. Hmm. Still not much to see. The light only reaches a few feet down. I haven't got a clue where the shaft leads. I can't see anything. I can't smell anything. Not the faintest breeze. Nothing. I haven't got a clue where the shaft leads. chain, quite solid and around five yards long. I almost drowned. I'll just put the chain around two of the bars. If they're ripped out, I'll have enough space to climb into the crevice. Now I need to fasten the other end of the chain somewhere. I'll hook the chain under the coupling. It's directly attached to the frame and should be able to hold plenty. That's it. The bars and the wagon are connected by the chain. Huh. A pile of stones. The stones are adding real weight, and I can barely manage to get them into the wagon. The wagon full of stones must weigh a good half a ton. Planks are of various thickness, and some are much more worn than others. Perhaps they're made out of different kinds of wood. I'll take one of the thick, solid ones. I'll leave the room. Alright then. I just need to make sure to get out of the way quick enough as soon as the wagon falls. I haven't got a clue where the shaft leads. Okay, the two bars have been ripped clean out of the concrete. Now there's enough room to climb up through the crevice. Let's hope that the crevice leads to freedom. Order's assembly room? Oh, this can't be for real. Fortunately, it looks like there's no one here. Oh, not again. Why do I continuously find myself standing in front of locked doors? Ugh! Oh, hell. That's another way of doing it. Calm down now. Angelina's still missing. Perhaps she's been used as bait in order to lure me here. But why? Where 
where is she now? Perhaps I should talk to Miss Valley again. She knows more than she lets on. The question is, what's with the Order? I mean, who belongs to it? What do they want from me? the hell was that? And now where am I? I've got to free myself somehow before whoever it is comes back. A green plastic bottle. I can't see what it is exactly. I'll shove it closer into the light. An old cleaning cloth. Quite obviously not been used for quite some time. A few shards of glass, probably from the broken oil lamp. They're curved and relatively thick. bottle open. The kerosene has spread and has run into the crannies in the wood. There's a small pool of it left. I think I've got it all. The rag is now soaked in the kerosene. Good. I'll hold the shot of glass in one of the beams of sunlight. I think it's doing it. The shard focuses the light and heats a tiny spot in the material. Now that ought to... Wow, way cool. A thin... Got it. Oh, okay, I have to get there. That looks better already. Much better. A 
should see what's behind it. Interesting. A family tree. Hey, maybe he'll give me some point as to where I... There, right at the top. Samuel and Catherine Gordon. Then is that the Gordon's family tree? So this house also belongs to a Gordon. Are they behind the whole thing? The Gordon's family tree, beginning with Marcus and Mordred, and going up to Samuel and Catherine Gordon. Hundreds of years of family history, full of murder and suffering. A hallway with a stair at the end. There's a kids program on the TV. Is there anything I can do for you, Samuel? What the hell was that? Hello? Yes. We've arrived. It's nice here. Everything's just like you said. No, Tom's gone shopping. Yes, Tom tied him up with rope. Uh, uh, I know. The man wasn't very nice to me. But I, I don't think it's good that he can't leave. Yes, I'll c keep a watch. Bye. I think I'm slowly going mad. There, there was a woman's voice. She called me Samuel, and I heard music. All right, now I really must pull myself together. Bobby's sitting down there, and Tom's somewhere around too. The pair of them have kidnapped me on behalf of someone who knows this house. But where the hell am I here? And more importantly, how the hell do I get away? This rope was... Huh. Looks like tightly bundled material. Towels, bed covers, sheets, blankets. Perhaps the occupiers weren't able to take them with them, but also didn't want to just leave them to the rats and mice. That's why they bundled them all up as tightly as they could. The thing weighs at least 60 pounds, I'll tie the rope under the binding, like that. This place in the wall looks a little strange somehow. A secret compartment. Oops, a kid's toy. Nothing more than kid's toys. 
Some child must have made themselves a store here. There's some other... A head! I think it's for putting your wig on so that it keeps its shape. I can definitely use that. The idea of these things is that you hang your suit or uniform over it to stop it creasing. You can then maybe brush it down too. wobbles a little, but the back of the chair is supporting the head. Not bad at all. Okay, now I need to act quickly. Uh, hel hello? Um, uh, everything okay? Oh, oh. Sorry, Bobby. Nothing personal. And now, let's get out of here. But where's all my stuff? I need my camera. Let's hope that Tom doesn't choose right now to come home from shopping, and that it's not all that far to the next town. Wow. The car seems to have withstood the impact well. Bobby must have had himself a sandwich. And there's the wrapping paper still lying there. This castle must be a few hundred years old. It would only ever have been heated with fireplaces back then. The chimney probably went through several rooms, so that it could give off heat all over. It doesn't look like there's been a fire here recently, but there are still a few charred bits of wood in the stove. I'll take one of the smaller pieces. Ah, oh, now my fingers are all black. A finely carved wooden chest. Now are my things in there? Locked. <sighs> yeah, well it would have been too simple otherwise. The lock in the lid kind of suggests that it's not going to be easy to get the lid open. Yep, so it is. I'm guessing that the chest isn't as old as it looks at first glance. As far as I know, numerical locks like this haven't been around for long. You have to enter the right three-figure combination. Only, what is it? The circles are recessed into the wood. That means that they must be able to be traced on the paper using a piece of charcoal. Hey, worked well. 
You can easily recognize the circles as well as the lines. Could the circles on the chest be simplified notes? Notes which just give the pitch, not the duration? If they really are notes, then there's a starting point missing. Perhaps you can begin anywhere, and just have to pay attention to the relative pitch of the notes with one another. Who might that have been? The king of the castle? Some kind of banners or flags. Strange that no one's taken them. These things usually stand for history and tradition. And would somebody who lives in a castle like to have them with them? On the other hand, if you wanted to leave everything behind you, then probably these things would be the first. like it's done something. Got it. All right, there's my stuff. All right, I'll just take this stuff. I probably won't need the rest anymore. Wonderful. I'm in the middle of nowhere. The next house could be miles away, and Tom could be back at any minute. Huh. I think I better find out where I am first. If Tom does come back, I can always jump into the bushes. The boy's around 12 years old, I guess. Looks like he could be watching me. The boy's around 12 years old. Hey! I know you're there. <laughs> Come out, I'm not gonna hurt you. You couldn't anyway. I'm much too quick for you. If you say so. I'm Darren Michaels, a mighty physics student. I'm Van Helsing. Whoa! Uh, the vampire hunter? I always thought you were a bit older, sir. <laughs> Can you tell me where I am? What's this castle? Eh? It's the old Gordon's place. The Gordon's? From Willow Creek? 
Willow Creek? I don't know what you're talking about. Sir Richard and Lady Eleanor used to live here. And where are we exactly? Where? In Wales. Oh, great. I saw some toys in the castle. Are they yours? Yes, all my things. And my car. I got that for my birthday. I daren't go in there since those men have been there. You better not. They're dangerous. Are they werewolves? Uh, no. But they kidnapped me. Cool. Have you seen the two men who are living in the castle now? Yes, nasty men. <laughs> you bet. One of them chased me. Said he would call the police if I don't disappear. I'm sure he wouldn't do that. The woman was much nicer. Which woman? The pretty one. I see. Was here a few weeks ago. She was snooping around and asked me about the summer house and the laboratory. And then she went. She took some blood samples with her. Strange. Uh, did, did she tell you her name, or what she planned to do with them? She needed the blood for research. Angelina said... Whoa, what? For research. Maybe she's a vampire hunter too. What did the woman look like? Well, like a woman. Pretty. Like this? Did she look like this? Yes, that's her. But... She had long blonde hair when she was here. I liked her much more like that. Long blonde hair? A and when did you say she was here? It was before my birthday. About four weeks ago. Long before we coincidentally bumped into each other in Biddeford. What exactly did the woman do when she was here? Looked at the castle in the summer house. Especially the house. Do you know what she did there? Looked for something, and I think she tried to get into the old laboratory. At some point, she gave up and started searching at the tomb in the marshes. I had to go home, because it was starting to get dark. When I came back the next day, she walked past me, coming from the summer house. She had a bag of blood in her hand and was very happy. And then, she left. What kind of summer house is that? It's all ruins. Blew up. Really? Yes. A long time ago. My father says that old Sir Richard died in the explosion. He had his laboratory in the summer house. He was a scientist. I think he was a vampire. Really? Of course. He experimented with blood. Who else does that kind of thing? Maybe you're right. And they gave up the castle after the explosion? Maybe. That was ten years ago. Since I've been coming here, the castle has always been empty. Listen, uh, Van Helsing, can you do me a favor and keep watch for the car and, and the other man coming back? I need to have a look around here and, uh, I need a lookout. Of course. Nothing gets past me. Excellent. It can't possibly be a coincidence. Angela snoops around the Gordon estate, and I discover a connection to this very family in Biddeford. Did Angelina lie to me? The question is, did she have a good reason, or does she work for the Order? I can't leave here before I found some answers. The house, or what's left of it, is not as old as the other runes here. That could have been a tower at one time. The princess would have been locked in the top, waiting for her knight in shining armor. Who knows what's waiting there now? A water hose, which apparently they used to use to blast the garden. Ah. <sighs> Hoses have been real useful to me up till now. Trees blocking the way, but I reckon I can climb over the trunk. Oh, damn. 
Damn. That could also have gone in my eye. monument. And there's more behind. Maybe some kind of family plot. Is that also some kind of grave? Huh. Nope. Rather more like a water basin. There's about half an inch of duckweed floating on the water. A pulley. Somewhat battered and weathered. But it still works. Looks useful. I'll take it with me. Huh. The ground's real soft everywhere here. I think it must be a swamp. I bet as soon as it rains, you can't put one foot in front of the other. This building must be the only one you can still get into. Could be Poseidon. Well, the statue's got a trident in its hand, at least. A stone figure holding weigh-in scales. The scales are empty. This stone statue is covered in moss, like the others. It's carrying a metal shield. Unusual. Little Van Helsing reckoned that Angelina had spent a long time messing around the tomb here. And here's the lid. Not lying squarely on the sarcophagus. There are some stone chips which have come off the edge. Doesn't look all too old. Angelina had opened the sarcophagus. That much is clear. But why? <laughs> Luckily, it seems to have not rained here for a while, otherwise I would have sunk in deeper and might not have been able to get out on my own. Hi there. Hello. That's a nice hatchet you got there. Mm-hmm. I found it. Do you think I could borrow it? A vampire hunter never puts his weapon down. I see. Do you never have a break from being a vampire hunter? What else can I play? All my toys are inside. Hey, look. Oh, my car. Buddy, I'm, I've got to get going. Of course. I don't know what I could ask him. The little guy's hatchet. Can I just borrow the hatchet? Yeah, of course. This wall is deaf and just as shaky. The only function of the wall seems to be to hold up the gate. I won't disturb it. Huh. A hook. It still looks pretty sound despite the rust.
I'll try to loosen the hook using the hatchet. That worked. This'll take a while. The axe is real blunt. Okay, I felled the trees and trimmed the trunks for a good one and a half yards. How does that go? You can somehow rig up a tripod out of three pieces of wood. So, and then like so. Yep, exactly. And now, one tripod. Just has to be erected now. I'll position it as well as I can over the sarcophagus. There are two belts. They look like carrion slings. And they look new. The belts are a ripstop weave. They'll sure hold quite a bit. I'll place the sling around the back right corner and the other around the front left one. The slings are exactly long enough to touch in the middle. Great idea! Oh, but sadly I've forgotten my crane. You know, the one I wanted to hang the pulley from? I'll hang the pulley on the rope. I'll try to get as much of the rope as I can. The length just makes it. Real careful. Oh, I hope it's gonna hold. What have we got? The gap is big enough to squeeze through. I only hope that my rig up doesn't collapse as soon as I'm in. this then looks like the inside of a tower 
And here's some kind of crater in the floor. Looks like something's exploded here. The poster survived the explosion relatively undamaged. It was probably hit squarely by the pressure wave and then pressed against the wall. Hmm, here's a table showing the occurrences of blood groups. Most of the people have blood group AB, then comes B, then A, and then quite rarely there's group O. The safe survived the explosion undamaged, I'd say. These burns may have well come from a Weldon set. The kid reckoned that Angelina looked real pleased with herself. Somehow she must have got the safe open. Now what have we got here? A combination lock. But not with numbers, with letters. with several blood samples. The boy mentioned that there's a number on each sample and there's a list of names stuck on the back of the safe. Now let's see. Weird. The numbers one to five are missing. That's Richard Gordon and William Gordon. Gordon's blood. What does Angelina want with that? Does she need it herself or something? Does she want to stop it getting into other people's hands? Uh, whatever it is, I can't trust her anymore. She's in this thing somehow and she's lied to me. I ought to drive back to Willow Creek. Maybe she's turned up there in the meantime. And then... Then we'll see. I can't get through there. The passage has collapsed a few yards in. Whoa! You've been in the crypt? Are there coffins in there? Yeah, but no vampires. Shame. Well, what is it then? A car! The other man's back! The other kidnapper? Huh. Uh, thanks for the warning. Okay, run home and, and tell your parents they should call the police, okay? I gotta be careful. Tom won't be too happy that I've disappeared. It's a plastic tube. Okay, I'll stick it in. Rather light. The walls of the pipe are thin. Maybe it belongs to part of a ventilation system or something. It looks like there wasn't any fire. There's no charring in the rubble. Whoa, hey! A welding torch! Angelina was using some heavy gear. But it doesn't look like it's been used. The safe wasn't cut open. Chains, rod iron, rather more like a Frankenstein movie.
piece with the rib can't be repaired. I'll cut that. Okay. Now I've got two halfway usable hose ends. how that's supposed to go. Works perfectly. If I heat up the plastic tube, it'll expand. Then the ends of the hose will fit into the tube. I think that'll do. It fits. Just wait a bit while it cools down. Done. It's a pretty close fit on the hose. No more water's getting out of there. When the water flows through it, that'll... The hose is in position. It's on. Okay, good. Let's put the whole swamp underwater. That ought to do it. Tom's car's back there. Maybe I could hotwire it and... I don't care what's happened to your head, you useless pisswit. Make sure you get the old cow on the phone. I'll look for that bastard. I'm never gonna get to the car. Tom would see me and I think I've seen a weapon. Looks like there are two options. I can wait here for the police and then explain to them for hours on end what's going on here. Or I can lay a trap for Tom and then steal his car. Oh. Hey, Tom! Stop! Stay where you are! Don't move or I'll shoot! <laughs> and I'd bet that'd be the highlight of your last five minutes on Earth. Tom. Get me out of here! Huh. Why should I? Weren't you gonna shoot me just now? I wanna... Get out of here! Then throw your weapon into the swamp and give me your car keys. I... I'll... You'll what? Die in utter misery? There. Now get me out of here. Not so fast.
What's going on with Angelina? Is she involved with all this? I've already told you. I don't know any Angelina. Tja, I'm inclined to doubt that. She was only in the village a few days ago. Then I didn't see her. You would certainly have noticed her. One more time, I don't know any Angelina, and there was nobody sniffing around the village either. Except you, okay? Throw me a bloody rope, will ya? Or something or other. Who ordered you to kidnap me? You're supposed to pull me out of this! Was it this secret society? I don't know anything about a secret society. The Order. That means nothing to you? Yeah. Okay. I was supposed to find you, knock you out, and bring you here. And then? She was going to call me on the phone and give me further instructions. She? A woman. Sounded quite old. No idea who she is. And she didn't want me staying in Willow Creek? Yeah. I was supposed to bring you here as soon as possible. Do you know who belongs to the Order? No idea. I've only ever seen these nutters over by the mine. They were wearing masks. I don't know who they all were. All right then, I'm gone. The police will be here soon. Get me out of here! Why? Do you seriously believe you're gonna be sucked to the bottom? Idiot. Excuse me, sir, there's been a letter delivered for you. Who delivered it? I don't know. It was in the hotel's post box. But there's no stamp on it, so it must have been delivered personally. Huh. Thanks. Hey, it's from Angelina. Dear Darren, I haven't been completely honest with you. I've been concerned with Willow Creek and Black Mirror for some time, and it was you I was looking for in Biddeford. I stumbled upon something there that I don't want to write about here. I can only tell you this much. You are in danger. There's a group of people who are out to kill you. They were already after you in Maine. They caught me here in Willow Creek. I managed to escape, and I've been hiding in a safe place since then. I found out today that you are here. I'll explain everything to you and hope that you will forgive me. No, I know that you'll forgive me when you know the dreadful truth. Come to the old lighthouse tonight at 11 o'clock. Make sure that no one follows you. I'll explain everything to you there. Together we can put an end to this whole thing. Take care of yourself and trust no one. You don't know who might belong to the Order. Angelina. Angelina's alive. That's the good news. But what kind of a game is she playing? Can I trust her? She lied to me. She knew about this place the whole time. And I'm sure she wasn't unfamiliar with Reginald Boris either. The question is, what side is she on? What's she up to? Either way, I'm gonna find out this evening at the lighthouse. But I should take some precautions. The only place where I'll get a few honest answers is in the Chronicle of the Gordons. Once I know which role the Order plays, perhaps I can deduce what game Angelina's playing. I've got to find a way to read the Chronicle in the museum. Great place to hide. Let's 
so I've just got to wait. The museum closes in an hour. <sighs> Hard to believe that I really did fall asleep. But it's only just after nine, and I've got enough time to have a look at the Chronicle and then go to the lighthouse. It's damn dark here. Good that at least a few lights are left on overnight. It's open. Let's have a look then. This is where the part about the Order seems to begin. Only the brave actions of this valiant man preserved us from Mordred. It is to him, Father Matthias, that we owe for our life and freedom. Let his name not be forgotten, no less his doings, which we carry with us in our hearts. But never more shall the destiny of our community lie on the shoulders of one man alone. A man who may not possess the strength of Father Matthias and cannot withstand the powers of evil as he did. Therefore, a secret society shall be founded. The most decent and brave men of our community shall belong to it. They shall guard the academy and the key, the sacrifice room and the scriptures. They shall be the very men that stand between the world and the abyss. They shall pass their knowledge of Mordred and his dark forces from generation to generation. They shall be the descendants of Father Matthias in both spirit and action, for he gave himself for the well-being of us all. Does that mean the Order want to prevent Mordred from gaining power again? A hundred-year-old crazy ass. <sighs> crazy. But assuming the people in the Order really believe in it, then why are they after me? I don't intend to bring Mordred or any other bad spirits back into the world. And even if, how could I? These guys are completely nuts. People have been murdered here because of this... this ghost story. And Angelina... Does she believe in this? Huh. Time that I ask her just that. We're gonna meet at the lighthouse soon. Huh. Hardly anything in it. Huh. I can see a tissue, some pieces of paper, and a chewing gum wrapper. Chewing gum. Wrapped in aluminum foil. A run-of-the-mill wooden board. It's part of the sewing machine. I'm sure no one will notice if this piece of wood goes missing. I'll take it. The shred is covered. Huh. There are two metal strips. One on the wall and one on the window. That's got to be a pretty simple alarm. As soon as you open the window, the contact is broken and the alarm is triggered. As soon as I open the window, the electrical circuit is broken. An old piece of chewing gum, very nicely wrapped in paper before being thrown in the trash bucket. You can't say movies aren't educational. That should be enough. The electricity will be conducted through the aluminum foil, even when the windows open.
That went well. I should probably, uh... Satan! <sighs> Not again. From days done by till days be done. The same befalls each golden sun. A silent shadow hanging long. Gripping terror doth grow and grow. Never cast into the light. Never is an end in sight. What? What did you say? Where do you know this poem from? The spirits of the forest whispered it to me. Spirits of the forest? What's all that garbage? Ghosts in robes. They've got horrible white faces. In the forest near the haunted mine. Hey, wait! Do you belong to the Order? Hello? <sighs> that was the poem that Reginald Boris had on him. He probably belongs to the Order. And the bum said he heard the poem near the mine. I should go and have a look around there before I go and meet Angelina. So it's here. Ah! 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 Man, what's wrong with me? Ah! If I was superstitious, I'd say a couple of ghosts just tried to make contact with me. But let's be rational here. I'm probably just losing my mind. Fantastic. Oh well. Hopefully it's just lack of sleep and the exhaustion. I don't like it either, but it was right to send him. Members of the Order, I gotta hide. I'd have to crawl about two yards through the shaft. Once they opened the grave and the boy wasn't in it, I knew this would happen. But he was so far away. Isn't it possible that the curse hadn't taken control of him? She sees it differently. Otherwise, she wouldn't have tried to keep him captive. Psst. She's coming. We thought we should meet in the mine today, due to the weather. Is that okay with you? It makes no difference. I should have guessed. Miss Valley's behind all this. She's little Vic's sister. She's been really involved in the whole thing. And of course, being a librarian, she knew the Order's history. She must have convinced a few people from the village to get involved. Then, for whatever reason, they've targeted me. And this Miss Valley will stop at nothing. I'm sure of that. Was Angelina in her way? I... I gotta find out. What does this mean? Why are we having this meeting? Is there something new for Reginald? What about the girl? Is she really here again? Have you heard anything from Wales? There's some bad news. Brother Reginald is dead. What the bloody hell did you just say? Oh my god! But this is not the time for mourning. The girl is still snooping around here, and what's worse, he has escaped. How? What are we going to do if he finds out? Silence. The danger is near. Very near. Both the girl and our American friend could destroy everything we've created over the last few years. I'm afraid we're forced into taking drastic measures. Ah, but we can't. We've got no other choice. I'd better get out of here. What was that? Someone there. It's him! 
Stop, Cameron, Theodore! It's all the right. door! We're not Don't going let to him hurt escape! You. Be careful! You've got no chance! I said stop him! Don't let him escape! Damn! Open the door. He mustn't escape. I'm out of here. Closing the door. Push it! <sighs> I can't hold it closed forever. Very good. The iron bars have blocked the door for a while. Nothing's happening. It must be possible to open the door. Okay, now the door's open. Let's get out of here. Quick! We'll have to pry it open. Use the lever. An iron bar. Half of the hole. Good. I'll knot the hose tight in the middle of the bar. Perhaps it'll work. Yes, the bar's lying across the mouth of the pipe. There he is! Shoot! Too late! Grab him! Follow me through this heavy grate. I'd still better get out of here fast. There's an iron ladder on the wall. I ought to be somewhere under the car park or thereabouts. Metal cover at the top of the ladder. Oh, uh, hi, Murray. What the hell's going on here? You can smell that stench through the whole hotel. Pack your things immediately and get out of here! I. Th there's something I gotta do very urgently, Murray. 
I I'll be as quick as I can, and I promise it won't happen again. Huh. No, it certainly won't. All right, then. I'm here. What's going on? Angelina? Where are you? Angelina! Angelina! Come out here and show yourself! I'd do anything for you. Why didn't you just tell me the truth? Oh no. Angelina. Where am I? Something's not quite right here. It says Fuller. What's Fuller's grave doing here? Ugh! You pussy. I'm gonna get you. We'll see about that. <sighs> what the hell was that? Did I see a ghost? Mom, what? Uh, uh, but you're. You're not my son anymore. But I. <laughs> what the? I don't believe it.
crazy dream. What was that? Hello? Ah! Were you having a nightmare? What? Who are you? I'm Ralph. My name's Darren. Where am I? I is this the old academy? Hmm. Mr. Bobby and I live here. I need to get going. See now. you. Hello? Uh, hi, Darren! What are you two doing here? You and Mr. Bobby? We live here. You've already said. But, uh, is there nowhere else you could live? No, the evil house where we used to live doesn't exist anymore, and we didn't want to go back there anyway. Could it be that you once lived in Sir Robert's sanatorium? Hmm, and Mr. Bubby too. He protects me and tells me what I have to do. It's good to have a friend. <laughs> and Mr. Bubby says that all the time too. Did you see the big fire at the lighthouse? Yeah, I like fire. You wouldn't have liked this one. Angelina was here. She came, and then she went, and then she was there again, and then there was someone wearing a white mask, and then there was fire. Hold on. You know Angelina? Yes. She was here a lot. So, there was Angelina, and a man with a mask, and then there was a fire? Yes. First we hid ourselves because it was thundering, and the bad man wasn't supposed to see us. But then the fire had shone so nice, we just looked. <laughs> I like fire. Yeah, and then? Then the fire went out. The rain put it out. Then you came. You were calling out loudly, but I didn't know what. Then you fell down and stopped moving. Mr. Bubby said I ought to get you into the dry. Tell Mr. Bubby thanks from me. That was a good idea. Mr. Bubby says, my pleasure. We don't often get visitors here. What happened then? Then the police arrived. We don't like them. They wanted to take us away to here. Then along came a really nice black car. It looked a lot different from the police cars, or the cars we sometimes see in the village. It looked kind of old, but it was very nice and shiny. But it wasn't there for long. Did you see who was sitting in it? No. Isn't it dangerous here? The ruins look like they're in danger of collapsing. Sometimes stones do fall down when it's stormy and there's thunder or if the wind's blowing wildly. But then we always hide anyway. Mr. Bubby is scared of thunderstorms. Are there good hiding places here then? Maybe some hidden rooms or passages? We always hide ourselves here in our house. Nothing can happen to us here. Yeah. Sure. You said that Angelina was here quite often. Yeah. When was the first time she was here? I... I don't know. Approximately. Around about... What do you reckon? Uh, uh... Hundred years ago? Huh. And what did she do here? She had a very careful look around at everything, and then she found our house. She said she was looking for something. A door that led under the ground. When she was here yesterday and disappeared for a short while, where was that? I don't know. Mr. Bubby wanted to make himself nice for her and didn't look. Mr. Bubby wanted to make himself nice for Angelina? I... I think Mr. Bubby was a bit in love with her. <laughs> 
but he could never bring himself to tell her. And now, it's too late. Maybe he'll tell her next time, when she comes to visit us. You think she'll come and see us again soon? That's, uh... I, I don't know, Ralph. Uh, perhaps. You know Black Mirror Castle? I've never been there. I think there are bad people that live there. Sir Robert lived there, oh, and he was bad. Yes, he was. Our friend Samuel used to know the castle. Samuel Gordon? He used to help me and Mr. Bubby. I liked him. But then when they shut down Sir Robert's wicked house, they said that Samuel was a wicked person as well. I don't believe that. Sometimes you do things that are wrong, but you don't mean to be wicked. Wicked voices make you do it, said Mr. Bubby. I need to get going, Ralph. See you. The raven flew out of a crack in the rock. There might be a cavity behind that. Hey, what's this then? It's a little stone figure. Looks like a chess piece. Uh, it's the queen. A heavy stone pedestal. Hmm, there are four recesses. I can see some remaining bits of black and white color in between, like a chessboard. These stones look a bit weird somehow. It looks like they've been stacked up. There's a chess piece lying there. That's gotta be a pawn. If this is supposed to be some kind of chessboard, then the pieces are conspicuous in their absence. This shed, on the other hand, Ralph will be better off here than in a sanatorium. You can't begin to imagine what that crazy Robert had done with the inmates. Hello, Ralph? <laughs> Hi, Darren. I saw a raven there a short while ago. We don't like him. He's always screeching and flapping, and he steals things. He steals things? He once stole the lid off one of our cans. He likes shiny things. Me too. And it was our lid. Do you, by any chance, know anything about the chess pieces that are hidden somewhere around here? What are chess pieces? Little figures that are kind of kings, queens, castles, and knights. They're usually small and made out of wood. But I'm looking for bigger ones made from stone. Mr. Bubby found one like that. It's a horse, a really nice one. Hey, cool. Uh, would you lend it to me? It's Mr. Bubby's toy. And would Mr. Bubby lend it to me? Mr. Bubby plays with the horse. If you take it away, then he have nothing left to play with. Ah, uh, I understand. But what if I brought him something else to play with? With horses. And, um, what else? Mr. Bubby likes music. Maybe you can get him something he can play music on. You can get him a piano. That could be a problem. <laughs> I need to get going, Ralph. See you. A 
a small smudged note. It says, the king went north, the pawn went south, the queen... Uh, I can hardly read the rest. And the knight to the... something ST. There's a knife sticking out of the wooden beam. It looks like someone's been carving into the beam. With little talent, but a lot of patience. What's that amongst the stones? A chess piece. The king. I wonder who put the chess piece there. It, it can't have been sitting there between the stones long. It's not been weathered at all and looks brand new. I'll cut a little piece out of a branch. I saw that on TV once. If you hit the bark with a hard object, like with a knife, then the bark loosens itself from the wood. Then, with just a bit of pressure, you can push the piece of wood out of the bark. Just cut a slit in the bark here, push the piece of wood back in a little, and there you go. A whistle. Hey, Ralph! Have a look at what I got here. Wow! That's much better than a piano! And smaller, too. Now, can I just borrow the horse for a short while if, if I give you the whistle for it? Okay. I heard a quiet click. 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 Phew. bird again. He's got his own private way into this room. A 
I'd say the raven pecked it apart. Maybe he was looking for something edible, or more sparkling things. Hmm, some clothes. They really could have belonged to Angelina. And here, a little book. Is that... That's gotta be Angelina's diary. And here, there's a folded note in the book. But one thing at a time. What's she written on the last pages? Tuesday, I found, found him. him. He's, He's called, called Darren Michaels. Or rather, that's the name that they have given him, if I'm right about my suspicions. He's very nice. I don't think he has the faintest idea about the whole thing. I wanted to speak to Mrs. Michaels, but nobody came to the door when I rang the bell. There seems to be a man following me. Even before my departure, I had the feeling of being watched. What does the man want from me? Evening. Mrs. Michaels has had a terrible accident. She's lying in hospital with severe head injuries. I wonder if she had already fallen when I rang the bell. Oh, God, I'm imagining all sorts of horrible things. Wednesday. I've been arrested for the murder of a man whom I barely know. I was led into a trap. A voice told me over the phone that they had information about Darren. When I arrived at the store, I discovered the body and was promptly arrested. I think my pursuer is behind this. Or am I being paranoid? Who can have an interest in finally ending all of this? Afternoon. Darren is so sweet the way he's really gone to town to help me. He's so ready to help. He's a bit of an oddball, but I like him a lot. Doesn't matter if he is who I think he is. I've found a good friend. Or maybe more. Later. Reginald Boris. That's my pursuer's name. There's no doubt anymore. He's here to hinder my search, to stop what I'm doing. Who has sent him? Evening. It's him. I know it now. He brought a little casket with him on our first date. Inside there was a photo of his mother and the servant, Bates. They were standing in front of the gate at Black Mirror Castle. I recognised it immediately. He simply has to be a Gordon. His mother had an affair, and after the fire she went to the USA. But I don't have the guts to tell him. His mom's lying in the hospital and he has enough to worry about. On the other hand, I've got to find out who my new adversaries are. What might happen if I were to take Darren back to Willow Creek and, in doing so, bring him into danger? I couldn't forgive myself for that. I'll go back on my own and start my own investigations into who our enemies are. I'll tell Darren everything at some point. Like I thought... Angelina knew more than she let on the whole time, and she put herself in danger to protect me. It all fits together. The payments from Willow Creek, uh, there being no pictures of my father, and me not being able to remember him. There was no car crash. Uh, there was a fire in the castle, and my mother was injured then. She was sent to the USA and received a pension, or maybe hush money. The only thing I don't understand what is it all about? What did Angelina want to achieve, and, and what does the Order want to prevent? And most importantly, what have I got to do with it? So she hid in here? In these runes with an oil lamp in her notes? She was very brave. Or crazy. She was very br- So she- She was very- so she, she was very, an old fashioned oil lamp. I'd rather leave it where it. A stone plinth. There are three grooves on each side. No idea what you can do with it.
There's nothing else in it. There's nothing else in it. So the raven got... This note was stuck in the diary. Darren, I hope this letter finds you. I can't tell you just how sorry I am that I wasn't honest with you right from the start. I've underestimated the danger from the Order for way too long. I've been playing a little game and now it looks like I've lost. The Order's agents are creeping through the ruins and it's only a matter of time until they discover this room. I'm going to hide the pieces and I'm going to try to break through to get to the village. Perhaps I can at least keep them away from the gate. Should you be reading this letter, then I haven't made it. And so, I ask you to complete my work. You don't believe in the curse, I know that. How could you, though? You were so far away. But I came across some illustrations during my studies, and it's all true. Terrible things happen here every 12 years. And that's been going on for centuries. Maybe it's mass suggestion, or maybe it's some kind of radiation, or, or maybe it's a curse. Call it what you like, but it has to stop. The key to all evil is hidden beneath the Academy, a chamber which was used centuries ago for some kind of dark rites. There are also the soul keys which Samuel Gordon discovered twelve years ago. Destroy them. Destroy everything. And if it's all just a fantasy in the people's heads around here... Take away the reason for them to fear. But guard yourself against the Order. It is an occult sect which I had believed to have died out. A great mistake. It still exists. They mess about with dead bodies and they want your blood. According to the legend, only a male Gordon can open the cult's chamber, touch the soul keys and carry out the dark rituals. That is why I was looking for you. I believe that you are the last of the Gordons. You are in the greatest danger, as long as the keys and summoning chamber are not destroyed. Then the Order will hunt you down to the very ends of the Earth. Up until now, I haven't managed to penetrate the catacombs. To open the gate, you need to have the mosaic tiles. I have only found one. It's in my rucksack. The other two are hidden somewhere within the castle. The only clue I have to the hiding place of one of the other tiles is a name. Maximilian Mortimer Gordon. You have to return to Black Mirror Castle and look for the mosaic tiles there. The danger is great, since I'm sure that most of the castle's residents are also members of the Order. So don't make yourself known to them. It's the only chance of getting the mosaic pieces, and the only chance, perhaps, to discover who your father is. It's all so awful, Darren. It's as though I've opened Pandora's box. I wanted to do something good, and in doing so have brought you into terrible danger. I hope that everything will come good in the end, and that we too can start fresh together. With love, Angelina. A curse? All of this because of a curse. <laughs> the blood of the Gordons. An occult secret society which like to call up the devil in person. It's all so crazy. How can you kill folks in the name of such a fantasy? How can anyone get so caught up in this superstitious baloney that they kill for it? But Angelina's right. They've got to be stopped. And I'm going to stop them. Angelina's death shouldn't have been completely in vain. Nothing. No mosaic tiles. I think I know who's got it. Black Mirror. I knew my path would one day lead here. I'll find out who my father is. Find the mosaic pieces and make sure that Angelina's death hasn't been in vain. But I gotta be damn careful. According to Angelina, at least one of the castle's residents is a member of the Order. Maybe I can find out who that is.
There's a really thick branch lying in the undergrowth. It's damp, but not rotten. It must have broken off the tree quite recently. Maybe in the storm yesterday. I wouldn't even have dreamed of standing in front of this gate a few days ago. looks real. It looks just like the photo. Huh. The lock on the letterbox seems to be damaged. An electric doorbell? I was expecting an old bell. Huh. The braces on this door are badly weathered. The two have turned to rust and aren't even connected to the door frame at the bottom. Using this branch as a lever should work. That's it. Hey! How did you get in here? Uh, the gate was open. Really? I'll wring that brat's neck. I've told her a hundred times that the gate must always stay closed if we don't want your bows snooping around the grounds. If you're referring to me, I'm not a yobo. I'm a policeman. Oh, you don't say. Then you're sure to have ID. I, um... Uh... Can I help you, sir? I've told Mr... Lewis, good sir. To you, it's just Lewis. You'll take care of this bit. Wonderful. You will have to excuse our gun, sir. How can I help? My name is Falk. Uh, I'm investigating a murder that occurred at the lighthouse last night. I heard about that. Tell me. But tell me, your accent. Um, uh, I'm part of an exchange program. The United States, Canada, and Great Britain exchange detectives to, uh, to learn about the various investigative methods. Sherlock Holmes meets Dick Tracy, you might say. If the government deems it necessary. What about Inspector Collier? Shouldn't he be accompanying you? He's, uh, sick today. Ah, I see. He is getting on a bit. How can I help you? Phew. A witness saw an unusual black car at the crime scene. What do you mean by unusual? <coughs> the Gordon family does have a classic 30s English automobile. In its possession. Unusual enough. Uh, were you up on the cliff with the car this morning? The ladies haven't driven out anywhere today. And I also don't think that Lewis has taken the car either. Ask him. He looks after the car. Mainly when he should be looking after the garden. This Lewis has a bit of an abrupt manner. He's... Welsh. Uh-huh. <coughs> he came with his mistress, Lady Eleanor, when she moved in here after the death of her husband. He used to look after her castle's gardens in Wales. 
He used to have a different kind of work ethic there. Lady Eleanor owns a castle in Wales? She does. Her husband, Sir Richard, was killed in a dreadful accident a few years back. She moved here soon after that. Interesting. This is an amazing property. Indeed. It's a place steeped in history. Unfortunately, all that history often had plenty to do with blood, death, and misfortune, from what I've heard. The Gordon family was often put to the test. That's true. Forgive me for putting it like this, but the castle doesn't make the best impression. I don't understand what that has to do with your inquiry, Mr. Falk. You said ladies. Lady Victoria. She owns Black Mirror Castle, and Lady Eleanor is a relative of hers from Wales. The ladies are the last of the Gordons. They reside here in the castle. Can I have a word with them? I would prefer it if you didn't disturb them. Lady Victoria is not a young woman. No harm in a few words, surely. Whatever there might be to discuss, you can also discuss with me. I've been involved with the Gordons for more than 70 years. I can tell you everything you may wish to know. This woman has been murdered. Did you know her? Are you sure, sir? Sadly, yes. Uh, her name is Angelina Morgan. Uh, you seem to recognize her. I... I... Come with me, sir. We'll have to show this to the ladies. Uh... Fine. One moment, please, sir. I'll announce your arrival. What was that in the mirror? Mr. Falk? Their ladyships are ready to receive you. Falk, is everything all right? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I didn't sleep well. Lady Victoria? Lady Eleanor. My name is Inspector Falk. Uh, I'm investigating a murder case. Bates said you had a photograph of the victim. That's right. Do you know her? What's her name? Angelina Morgan. I don't know her. If that's everything. I do have a few more questions. It's all right, Bates. Of course we will be glad to cooperate with the police. Drive to the village and do the job I asked you to do. I'm sure the inspector will keep us company. Very well, ma'am. So, how can we help you? You seem to be extremely keen to see the picture of the dead woman, and Bates had a noticeable reaction when I showed him the picture. You are sure that you don't know this young lady? Quite sure. Only we are... concerned. The murder took place quite close to here. Not the first. Sadly, you're quite right. It's now. It's twelve years ago, you understand? So many years. And now there's another murder. Tell me about the series of murders twelve years ago. No. It doesn't have a thing to do with this crime. Leave all that alone. 
please confine yourself to this murder case. This is quite bad enough already. Your butler, Bates, seems to be looking after you. He has been our butler for decades. He is something like the decent soul of this house. He sees it as his highest duty to do all he can for my well-being. Also, even if he neglects his own welfare. Is he ill? Yes, I fear he is. We've often suggested that he sit with us and enjoy some peace and quiet for a while. But he always strictly denies that he can no longer fulfill his obligations. We've recently taken on domestic help to at least help him out a little. May I look around the castle? Um, I'd very much like to talk to Lewis one more time. Of course. We have nothing to hide. Stay as long as you like. Only please keep away from the private rooms. That goes without saying, ma'am. A basket of knitting gear. May I borrow a piece of thread, Lady Eleanor? Some thread? Yes, please. Uh, about... Certainly. Help yourself. Thanks. Good. Thread is always useful. I... You've only been living here a few years, Lady Eleanor? That's right. I didn't want to live alone in a big house after my husband died. So you moved in with your relatives in Willow Creek and brought Lewis with you? Lewis was our gardener in Wales. He is sometimes a bit difficult, but I didn't have the heart to lay him off. I offered him to come with me and look after the garden here. Which he doesn't seem to do. Well, he didn't cope very well with having to leave his garden and his home in Wales. Tell me about your estate in Wales. It's a lovely castle. Not as big or old as this one. I haven't been back since we left. I'm afraid it's probably in a terrible condition. And the marsh has probably spread even further. It's terrible. I couldn't stomach seeing our home like that. We had many happy years there. When did your husband die? A few years ago, Sir Richard, my husband, was a scientist. He did his experiments in a summer house. I used to joke that he would blow himself up one day. I didn't really believe that that's exactly what would happen. Huh. I'm willing to bet that I was imprisoned in Lady Eleanor's castle. It all fits together perfectly. And the phone call would suggest that it wasn't chosen at random. Did she make her old estate available for the order to use? Lewis is here of his own free will. I don't understand why he doesn't give this new life a go. You are young, Mr. Falk. You don't know what it's like having to leave your home behind you. Lewis's roots are in Wales. A tree withers without roots. Why doesn't he go back then? I've suggested it to him. I promised him a small amount of money to start him off. First I thought he would do it, but then he stayed after all. Strange. He's a complicated man. He's been working for me for over 20 years, but I still don't have the feeling that I actually know him. I think he blames me for his unhappiness. He only ever speaks to me if it can't be a... What kind of research was Sir Richard doing? He had very diverse interests. After the tragedy 12 years ago, he was mainly concerned with... Well, with blood. With blood? He was convinced that the Gordon's blood must somehow be different from that of other people. 
I think he was looking for a scientific explanation for all of the misery that has accompanied the family for hundreds of years. A curse in a test tube. Insanity is hereditary, as you may know. Why not misfortune? Or the misfortune is only the result of the hallucinations. Hmm. That explains what Angelina was looking for in Wales. She was hoping that Richard had found out something interesting before he died. I'm going to have another look around. Goodbye, Lady Eleanor. It's nice to see another face in this house. A large double winged door. It's locked. Inspector, you have no reason to be here. This door is to remain closed. Uh, certainly, madam. Uh, please forgive me. Why is she making such a big deal about this door? Victoria, would you please tell me what's behind the locked door? Only an unused wing of the house. Could I have a quick look in there? No, unfortunately not. The wing is in danger of collapsing and that's why it's closed off. For your own sake, keep well away from that wing. Absolutely. I'll go and take a bit of a of look around. Of course. What's behind the closed door over there? There was a terrible fire here 24 years ago. Samuel's wife, Catherine, lost her life. That wing has been closed off since then. Too many memories, I think. Did the fire start on the ground floor? No, on the first floor. The ground floor was mostly spared as far as I know. But even the rooms below those destroyed in the fire remain closed. Bates and Victoria make sure that no one goes into them. I see. Was anyone else injured or killed? Mm. I'm going to have another look around. Goodbye, Lady Eleanor. It's nice to see another face in this house. I don't have anything to ask her at the moment. few teaspoons. I'm just going to take a... A pair of old rubber boots. They're as clean as when they were made, though. Perhaps they belong to Lewis. An old wooden ladder. It seems to have been used a lot. The rungs are really worn and smooth. Who have we got here? Huh. This thieving magpie in a raven suit has something I need. Huh. Ralph was talking about a shiny black car. Is this the one he saw? But who drove from the castle to the crime scene this morning? And what were they doing there? He doesn't like that at all. I gotta be careful. Ravens have got hard beaks that are as sharp as knives. They can really make a mess of you. I've knotted the spoon to the thread. You're not gonna free that in a hurry. A 
let's try it. Look at this, a shiny spoon. Excellent, Angelina's mosaic piece. A piece of mosaic for a spoon. Good deal for me. And now the boots look like boots should. Dirty. Toolbox. Various wrenches, cloth, hammer, pliers, all the things you need. Hey, Lewis. You again? I thought you'd been thrown out. Lady Victoria gave me permission to have a look around the castle and the gardens. How nice of her. What do you want? That's a nice car. Certainly is. The only decent surprise here. I discovered it behind the stables. Built it back up from scratch. My father used to work on a car like this and he taught me quite a bit. Do you sometimes take it out for a spin? To the coast, for example? I drive the ladies. They used to still have bloody horses in the stable, but looking after them was too much effort for the old folks. Now, this is the only pair of wheels. But the ladies don't leave the house much at all. Bates usually walks to the village. He says it's good for his health. <laughs> But every time it takes a bit longer. You weren't at the coast with the car this morning? No. Well, um, see you later. Not if I see you first. Hello. Oh, hello. A living soul, eh? My name is Falk, Inspector Falk. I'm a policeman. A copper? How exciting. I'm Sally. Do you know this woman? Hmm. Never seen her before. Looks a bit like a snob. I don't suppose there are pictures of all the cooks who have worked here, by any chance? No, no idea. Must be ages ago, though, since there was an actual cook here. Ask Bates, he knows everything. Uh, I'd prefer not to ask either him or Lady Victoria. Then I don't know either. Lewis seems to take care of his car rather better than the garden. That's for sure. Ever since I've been here, he's been doing something to it nearly every day. And when he's not fixing it, he's either polishing or driving around in it. Has he driven it this morning? This morning? Um, yeah, yeah, he did. I heard him starting it up. You can't help but hear that. But you didn't see him. I know exactly what that car sounds like. When he's working on it, he must start at something like... 20 times a day. But you weren't able to see whether or not Lewis or somebody else was driving it. Lewis is the only one who drives that car. Hmm. Okay. Do you know what's behind the locked door in the hall? 
I've asked myself that question too. But you can't get a thing out of Bates about it. Once he got me listening at the door, he gave me such a telling off like nothing I've ever known before. He was so mad he nearly collapsed. He was coughing blood and I had to hold him up. I've been giving the door a wide berth since then. I've got to find out what's behind that door. The rooms there would be an ideal hiding place for one of the mosaic tiles. Okay. Ah, don't worry about it. Lady Victoria's on the phone. Let's see. I don't know if it's him. Don't we have a photograph? Young man. It's not befitting even for a policeman to eavesdrop behind closed doors. I didn't mean to. Were they talking about me? But why should Lady Victoria of all people cooperate with the Order? She's got more of a reason than anyone else to want to put an end to the curse. A huge metal globe. A monstrous thing. There's some letters engraved in the stone plate on the globe's pedestal. There are... names. A whole series of them. Wait a minute. The first name is Maximilian Mortimer Gordon. That's the name from Angelina's notes. Does that mean... Huh. I can't hear anything. But the stone slab could be the lid of a secret compartment in the globe's pedestal. And it would be an ideal hiding place for a piece of mosaic. An old, original English teapot. My mom used to have a similar one. Huh. Don't touch! Please excuse me. But this teapot is very old, and Bates has told me many times that I must look after it carefully. He's just popped down to the village to get some tea. We've run out. There's no more tea? I didn't even think that'd be possible in an English castle. Bates said that the tea had gone bad. He got rid of it. Huh. Boy, he needed an excuse to go to the village. So much for the nakedness in England. Four naked girls at once here. <laughs> and the chap they're all entertaining really seems to be enjoying it. Exhaustion when this is all over. Good day, Sally. Yes. I noticed that the bathroom floor up there is extremely dirty. What? Not again. It looks like boot prints. I've told Lewis a million times he shouldn't come through the house in his muddy boots. Damn it. I'll better clean that up before the old get notices it. 
Otherwise, they'll have me cleaning it again and again and again. Sally is distracted. Time to secretly take the teapot to the library. And then I'll try to work out where I can get some tea at short notice. So, the teapot and service are already in place. Now we just need some tea. It'll be dangerous for me in the village. The Order will definitely be looking for me there. But it'd be a good opportunity to see if Bates is trying to alert the Order. I'm gonna have to go back to the village and get some tea. But before I enter the lion's den, I'm gonna take some precautions. It'd be best if I lure the entire Order in the hotel. Then I can walk around the village square in relative peace. Here's a phone. Then, let's do it. Uh, Murray? Uh, hello. Uh, Darren Michaels here. Oh, I'll be leaving today. I'll be at the hotel in about half an hour. No, I just wanted to let you know so you can uh, write the bill. Nothing to pay? Oh, right, right, right. I paid in advance. Never mind. Now you know. Uh, see you in half an hour, Murray. Uh, see you soon. Okay, so Murray knows. If I'm not completely mistaken, most of the order will be waiting for me at the hotel in half an hour. To the village. I hardly believed he was shopping at the library. Damn it, Tom's here again. So Bates has got something to do with the order. I've got to get closer, but better around the outside. Oh, that young gopher. But you are generously compensated. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly how much I need this bloody compensation. I will not tolerate that tone of voice. You know... All right, man. I'll go and look for her. Thank you very much. Interesting. Locked. Damn. Where else can I get a tea in this dump of a place? I have to get inside. I don't have time to wait until this evening. How fitting. The same principle as in the hotel.
snapped. Uh, but I've achieved what I wanted to. Ah, there's the tea I need. Now, quickly back to the castle. I guess bait... ready. Just need some hot water. I'll just let Sally know. Good day, Sally. Yes? Sally, uh, Bates has asked me to tell you that you can announce tea time today. Now all we're missing is the hot water. Oh, so I'm good enough for that now, am I? He was rather exhausted after doing the shopping. No wonder. I don't understand why he simply didn't tell Lewis to go. I do. Insanity is hereditary. A lion's head. I think the lion was a symbol of immortality in ancient times. What's that got to do with a bathtub? pointed to these tiles. It won't move at all. Whoa! There's a cavity behind it. There's nothing else in the cavity. A handwritten page from a book. It looks like it's from William Gordon's diary, with additions from his grandson, Samuel. As far as I know, they both fell from one of the castle towers. Now, did Samuel rip out the page and hide it first? But then, why? Huh. 
There are lots of little pyramids or triangles scribbled on the page in a circle. Three of them have been crossed out. Now, I've seen these triangles somewhere before. I'm almost certain there's a secret compartment hidden behind the stone slab. Most of the ripped out pages don't tell me much. They seem to be the same pyramids that... Let's see... You can push them in! Yes, finished. But nothing's happening. Most of the rip though. Compartment, and inside there is the second piece of mosaic. What are you doing there, sir? I, uh, oh, I was just looking at this space here. Unusual, isn't it? Indeed, it is. There was always a stone slab there before. Perhaps someone removed it. I will ask Sally about that. <sighs> that was close. Lady Victoria, I've just returned from the village and I thought you might like to know. Very good, Bates. Take a break for half an hour. No debate now. Mr. Bates? Yes? I've noticed a huge locked door on the ground floor. I'd keep away from that, sir. Why? There was fire in the rooms through there some years ago. The damage was never properly repaired. The walls have been ruined by rainwater, uh, and the beams have been rotting for twenty years or more. I think you'd risk your life going into that wing of the house. Lady Victoria. Yes, sir? She seems to me to be rather bitter. She is a dignified old lady. Who has to bear a greater burden than I would wish for her? 
the death of a husband and her two sons, the murders, the castle's decline, the end of the family line. You said it, sir. What can you tell me about Lady Eleanor? If you want to know something, why don't you ask her yourself? I'd like to hear your opinion. Why do you think she brought Lewis here with her, after her husband's death? And what do you mean by that, sir? Really now, I ask you, sir. Lady Eleanor is a lady, and she treats her servants accordingly. Lewis would have been unable to get a new position. He's simply too old. We can offer him a form of retirement here. But neither Lewis nor Lady Eleanor give the impression of being happy with the arrangement. You could maybe even believe that she owes him something. I would be aware of that, and I can tell you that your surmising is incorrect. Are you not feeling too well, Mr. Bates? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Perhaps you should have a, a lie down. I'll have a lie down when I have time to do so. The work won't get done on its own. Sally could do it. <laughs> I doubt that very much. That must have been quite some fire to destroy the wing like that. It was a dreadful tragedy. Such as we've already suffered too many times here. It must now be 24 years ago. Master Samuel and his enchanting wife Catherine were just married and had only recently moved into the castle. We were hoping that he would one day take over the castle from his father and give us a son and heir. But then, they had not even been here for six months. There was a fire. Did anyone know how the fire started? Uh, no. Master Samuel lost his wife in the fire and then vanished for the next 12 years. He'd been deeply wounded by the events. You don't think too much of Sally, then? I don't think too much of her work. So why do you employ her? It wasn't my idea. Her ladyship insisted that we should employ a... relief. Not a great choice, apparently. It won't last long. She'll soon have enough and then disappear. Were there any other victims of the fire? Uh, anyone injured, perhaps? Our cook at the time was the first to discover the fire and tried to pull young Mrs. Gordon from the flames. She became trapped by the flames and would have burnt to death had she not saved herself by leaping out of a window. But she injured her back very badly and had to leave us after that. Why are you interested in things which happened here so many years ago? Uh, well, the young lady at the lighthouse was also burnt. I find the connection rather stretched. What kind of a man was he? this Samuel Gordon. Hmm. His father sent him off to boarding school early since he was a very obstinate, wild child. His behavior improved at the school. The teachers described him as an alert, intelligent, and friendly boy. And in the holidays, we found him so too. He got to know Miss Catherine after being at school. A wonderful, good-hearted woman. They were married and seemed to have found a perfect happiness. What do you mean, seemed? Well, there were some arguments when they lived here. Was he violent? To her? 
I... I don't really know. But I fear he may have been. Miss Catherine was unhappy, and if there hadn't been some wonderful times every now and again, then she perhaps would have left him. It could have been noticeable to us at that time. The two faces of Samuel Gordon. On the one hand, the loving, caring husband, and on the other, the arrogant and brutish egomania. After his wife's death, this nasty side of him seemed to disappear. He never visited us. However, common acquaintances described him as a profoundly sad and broken man. That is, until he returned and slaughtered some innocent people. It's terrible. We all wonder ourselves. Perhaps we didn't want to believe that this evil side of his soul had returned. I'll catch you later, Bates. Goodbye, sir. Sally put her cleaning things down here. I'll take the mop with me. I'll lay the mop head directly over the plug hole. That should create a distraction. Mr. Bates? Yes? Mr. Bates, the bathroom's underwater. Sorry? I was just going past the bathroom, and the water was already washing into the hall. Can you please get Sally, sir? If Sally, if Sally, if Sally doesn't go to the bathroom soon, then Bates will go get her himself and find me. Good day, sir. Yes? Sally, quick! The bathroom's underwater. What? Bates is really mad. You must have forgotten to turn the water off. Oh, me? No, no! don't know how that could have happened. I've had enough of your excuses. <laughs> You've missed something there. But I have never left the flannel in the bathtub. Oh, her ladyship will hear about this. <laughs> you can consider yourself lucky if we don't subtract the damages from your wages. They're both occupied. Bates is... This bedpost looks more than a little strange. There's a slot in the side of the post. What have we got here? Hey, there's a little brass key inside. Hmm. The drawer is locked. A small metal box. A few documents... And a photo! That's my mother! It's a picture of Mom, Bates, and a few other servants in the snow in front of the entrance portal. Underneath it says, The Good Spirits of Black Mirror Castle, Christmas 1969. That doesn't add up. I was born in February 1970, and in this picture, my mother doesn't look at all like she's seven months pregnant. Does that mean... No, no, the photo must have been labeled wrong. A 
checkbook, a few notifications, and transfer forms. These are exactly the same ones I found in my mom's desk. And the handwriting is an exact match too. So it was Bates who was regularly sending cash to my mom. But on whose behalf? And... And am I really just looking for my father? This thing here could still be interesting. There's a note here between the papers. It has a header which says, Combination. That looks like some kind of an aid memoir that Bates has written out. He must have conceded that his memory wasn't getting any better and wanted to play it safe. It says here, On Sir Egmont's portrait, the builder's eldest sister, my Christian name, the nymph's numbers. Hopefully, they're both still occupied. We're going to discuss this immediately. But nothing happened! Only because the police officer discovered it before it was too late. <laughs> They're going downstairs. Excellent. In all the commotion, Bates will have forgotten that he didn't lock his room. XVIII -I -I is written on the bottom corner. Ah, a Roman 18. There's a Roman numeral carved into the base of the figurine. 19. XX is engraved on the base. There isn't really anything to see on the base of this figurine. Let's see. The nymphs have the numbers 1, 18, 19, and 20 on them. That would be 58 in total. But that doesn't help me with the symbols. Maybe the numbers represent letters. What would that give us? A R S T. Cars? No. Star. Yes, of course. The symbol is a star. Hey, there's a letter inside. It's addressed. If Bates' full name isn't going to be on the envelope, then perhaps maybe at least in the letter? It's a bill for. for a gravestone. Made according to your desired... Uh, the inscription is as follows. Edward Bartholomew Bates. To no one's duty and to carry it through. That is everything. So, Edward Bartholomew then. Weird name. Which symbol does that point to? Good day, Sally. Yes? Does the name Sir Egmont mean anything to you? Sir Egmont? Of course. Really? Who's that, then? And why do you want to know that? I need the information for my investigation. And what if I didn't tell you? What's that supposed to mean? Come on, tell me. Well, one good turn. Being a copper, you can certainly do me a little favor. My brother Rupert's got a problem with a few speeding tickets. Maybe you could... Hey, hey, slow down. I'm not the traffic police. Tell me who Sir Egmont is, or your brother's speeding tickets will be the least of your problems. You can't force me. I'm not telling you anything until you've helped me out, too. <sighs> okay. So what's your brother's name? Rupert Wood. I'll see if there's anything that can be done. Perhaps I can fool her on this. 
Okay. Ah, down. Do the names Edward or Bartholomew mean anything to you? Mean anything? What do you mean by that, Mr. Fogg? Perhaps you associate uh, a particular symbol or sign with these names. Oh, I've always been interested in these kinds of things. Now, uh, uh, let me think. Now, Edward doesn't have any significance for me. But the name Bartholomew comes from the Bible. Saint Bartholomew, he was one of the Twelve Apostles. He preached in Persia and also in India, possibly. He died a martyr's death. He was flayed alive. His skin was removed. That's why his symbol is a knife. A knife? I think you may well have helped me with that. Glad to. Even if I do find your questions rather odd, surely they can't all be to do with the dead girl. Oh, it's a complicated case. I'll go and take a bit of a of look. Of course. Around. Hmm. It looks as though something's been painted over here at the top, directly above Samuel and Catherine's generation. see any Sir Egmont, and I don't know who Bates meant by the Builder. I can't see any Sir Egmont. As I understand it, this house was built by your two ancestors, uh, Marcus and Mordred. Is that correct? Well, they at least laid the foundation stone. Most of the foundations, the cellars and a few walls, are from that period. Not the rest. Oh, no. You don't seem to be too au fait with architecture, Inspector. In Marcus's time, they weren't able to build castles like this. That came much later. Who gave the castle its uh, present-day look? Many of the masters of Black Mirror improved and extended the castle, laid the gardens and modernized all of the fixtures and fittings. But the one who really had the greatest influence on the fabric of the castle as you see it now, was Frederick Arthur Gordon. He gave the castle the appearance it has today. Frederick Arthur Gordon, then. Thank you. I'll go and take of a course. bit. Of course. So, Frederick Arthur Gordon... Where are you? Ah, here he is. Frederick had four sisters. The oldest answered to the pretty name of... Rose. Old Frederick Arthur's oldest... Can you tell me where Sally's from? Her family has a farm in Sussex. At least, that's what she told me. Do you doubt that? Not really. 
Her behavior and the way she talks quite clearly point to farmyard origins. I'll catch you later, Bates. Goodbye, sir. <sighs> Let's try it. Hello, operator? Uh, please put me through to Rupert Wood in Sussex. Yes, I'll wait. Mr. Wood, uh, Mr. Rupert Wood, do you have a sister named Sally? Yes, uh, my name's Inspector Falk. Uh, I'm calling on behalf of the traffic police. Yeah, yes, calm down. No, 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 listen. No, 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 she isn't. It's concerning your speeding ticket, sir. It seems as though someone has made a mistake. According to our records, you are 99 years old. <laughs> that surely can't be right, can it? 34. Yes, yeah, yeah, I thought so. Listen, I'm going to delete the record, okay? Your speeding ticket is thereby null and void. Yes. No problem. Goodbye, Mr. Wood. Rupert Wood, 34, from Sussex, now believes that his speeding ticket has disappeared into thin air. Hopefully his sister believes that too. Good day, sir. Yes. All right. The speeding tickets have been canceled. Now what's all this about Sir Egmont? So, where does my brother live and how old is he? Rupert Wood, 34, domiciled in Sussex, as of now does not have any speeding tickets against him. You're a darling. Uh, okay, th that's enough. Now, will you at last tell me who Sir Egmont is? Here he is. <sighs> breakfast cereal? Sir Egmont's finest breakfast flakes. They're Bates' favorite. The ba Clever. And what does the old guy wear on his uniform? A medal in the shape of a cross. That's it. Okay. Ah, don't worry. It's too heavy for a jewelry box. I guess it's more like some kind of old-fashioned casket. Big key. There's only one door here whose key you'd hide in a casket. And a small golden medallion, or at least half a small golden medallion. It must have been one you could open originally. There's small hinges on it. Inside is a photo of me. Me as a little boy, three or four. I'm certain it looks just like the pictures of me as a child in Boston. Was I adopted? There's something engraved on the back of it. Adrian. Is that my name? And, and if it is, why was it changed when I was adopted? To make it more difficult for the order to find me? I'm 
for a few answers. This is the only accessible room in this wing. Next door is locked and all the other rooms are completely dilapidated. There's a small wooden plate lying here. It looks like it belongs to a game. I've got the feeling I've seen it somewhere before. Someone has written Ralph on the back. There's a huge mirror built into the wall. Quite elaborate for such a simple mirror. The mirror is very lavish and ornately framed. There seems to be some kind of mechanism at the bottom of it. I've got no idea how it works. I think something's missing. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Darren. Ralph, uh, I've got something here and was wondering if you could maybe help me out with it. I've got one of those too. Here, look. A sliding block puzzle. I remember those from when I was a kid. Yeah. Is it yours? A nice lady gave it to me. A lady? Yes, I couldn't recognize her. But Mr. Bubby says she's a holy one. Interesting. Mr. Bubby says you can have it. It's a bit broken. Well, that's very nice of Mr. Bubby. Thanks a lot. I need to get going, Ralph. See you. There seems to have been a door there. I remember this game from when I was a kid. I really liked playing it back then. There's something rattling inside when I shake it. I've got to get it so that the number of the same colored counters in a row corresponds to the number on the edge. I don't know what happens after that though.
at the bottom. I've got to get it. Balls outside. Now let's see what we can start with this. Yes, it fits. The little ball rolls around the outer circle. Now I need to adjust something else. I think it has to get to the middle. I think the ball has to go into the hole in the middle, but I can only put it in the front. Ah, I can rotate the individual discs with this button at the front. The buttons on the side seem to make the partition walls go down. All right, and let's see. The mirror, it's actually a secret door. There isn't the slightest sign of decay. In fact, this is one of the most well-maintained rooms I've seen in the entire castle. It looks like a nursery in an old movie. A girl's room. Look at this, more little balls. Like in a dollhouse. A four-poster bed. Velvet, silk, and lace. Whoever it was that set this up wanted a doll for a child. 
a porcelain music box. And underneath it, the third piece of mosaic. This melody... Adrian, wake up. Who? Your father had changed a lot. It poisoned him. It brought out his dark side. Made him go mad. It burnt me. Mom? I was pregnant. Twins. The doctor said it was a miracle that I gave birth to two healthy children, despite my burns, despite all the suffering. A miracle. At first, I didn't want you. You reminded me of him, of what happened, of my scars, the pain. I didn't want to live anymore. But then, these two little things just lying there, helpless, innocent. I took my parents-in-law's offer and after more than a year in various hospitals we moved here. I needed a hiding place. I didn't want to show my face to the world. You needed a family and yes, I thought I understood. How would it all come to that? And Samuel? Your father didn't know that I was still alive, and he didn't know anything about you two. I started to hate him. He ruined my life, and his parents' life. When he turned up here, after his grandfather's death, I hid myself here in my rooms, and I waited for him to disappear again. Angelina was at boarding school, far away. Safe. Friends had told Victoria that Samuel was a broken man after the fire. And didn't seem so nasty anymore. But I was still afraid of him. When the first murders happened, I sensed that Samuel's dark side had returned. However, Bates reassured me. He said that Samuel gave the impression of being quite balanced. And after all, the first incident... William's death happened before he'd arrived. They didn't believe me when I told them how quickly and completely the curse would take control of him. Bates and Victoria blame themselves for that to this very day. Did Angelina grow up in the castle? No, not really. She went to various boarding schools and was only here during the holidays. Dreary castle and a disfigured. like me. Oh, not the right environment for a child. I think she was always happy when the holidays were over. What happened then? 
Why did she look for me? Two years ago, she came to visit the castle for a few weeks. She skulked around the place, read books. I didn't think she was in danger. All the other women of the family were left untouched by the curse, you see. But somehow it struck her. It made her think that she was destined for something bigger. Whispered to her power and fame. Tempting for a child who perhaps never got the attention she needed. Once we worked out that she was absorbed in things that should never have seen the light of day. We took her away from here. We reinitiated the order and hired someone to track her down after she escaped. Reginald Boris. Right. Once he tracked her down to Biddeford, sheer horror broke out within the order. What would she want from you? Your blood? We gave orders to do whatever was needed to keep Angelino away from you. What was it that drove my father and great-grandfather mad? The castle. It's the castle. What do you mean, the castle? Oh, you were a happy child. Both of you were. You enchanted the nurses and were my guiding lights in a dark night. But your behavior changed here in the castle, Adrian. We'd have just been living here for a few years when you nearly killed your sister. You became... aggressive. Volatile. One day, you pushed Angelina down the big staircase into the hall. It was a miracle that she only broke her arm. She could have been dead. Did you give me away because of that? I didn't give you away. It was for your own safety. But I saw Samuel's look in your eyes, Adrian. I was scared of my own little boy. Mrs. Michaels, the cook, who tried to pull me out of the flames and paid with her own health, took you on. You can't imagine how happy I was when I heard that your behavior became normal again in America. You mean this castle made me sick? Made me go mad? The people here believe that there is a curse on the Golden Males. Perhaps the curse means that they drive themselves to disaster as long as they live here. Did the Order imprison me in the bunker? And kidnap me and take me to Wales? No. We first found out from Miss Valley that you were here. We decided to get you away from here and tell you the plain truth. But it was like you suddenly disappeared from the face of the Earth. We feared that Angelina had got to you. It wasn't Angelina. Or at least not her alone. There was a man with a mask in the jail. That wasn't one of us. Well, at least I hope it wasn't. The Order searched the whole area and we finally found you in our own assembly room of all places. We drugged you and we took you to Wales, to Eleanor's old castle. Miss Valley was already on the way to explain everything to you, but when she arrived, you were gone. What role do Bates and, and Lady Victoria play in all this? They, like me, have witnessed what the curse can do to good people. So they've dedicated their lives to not letting it happen again. They've brought the Order back into being. An Order that was founded centuries ago to fight against the curse and its repercussions. Until it was forgotten. We've all paid dearly for that. Who are the members of the Order? Victoria, Bates, Eleanor, and myself are committed to the Order. But the others do the real work. The young Miss Valley, for example. She's the leader. Because her brother Vic fell prey to Samuel. That's right. Who killed Angelina? We don't know. Victoria thinks that Angelina might have done... Something to herself in her madness. 
pouring gas all over herself and setting herself on fire? Nonsense. I know. Perhaps we have another adversary that we know nothing about. Or... Could it have been me? Impossible. We followed you through the sewer system. You didn't have time to drive to the cliffs and kill her. Then it was the great unknown? I doubt that we don't know him. It must be someone who knows about all the incidents in the castle and knows about the Order. One of us. Who? If I knew, then he would already be regretting what he has done. Angelina was a good child. She had recovered, just like you had. We should have just taken her away from here forever. And what happens to me now? You have to get away from here. As far as you possibly can. We don't know who killed Angelina. They could also be after you. You mean after my blood? That's why we have to get you out of here and organize a new identity for you. And secondly, you have to leave here under your own will. This castle, this whole area isn't good for you. I'm afraid that you would change again. If you stayed any longer, you'll hallucinate and maybe one day do things you don't want to. You mean... I'll see things that aren't there at all? I don't know. I only know that it made your father capable of butchering a 12-year-old boy. All right, then. I'll go. Mom? Will we see each other again? Talk to Bates. He'll arrange plane tickets for you. You fly to Florida. We'll see each other there again in a few weeks. I... It's... It's all too much. I know. But one day you'll understand. We'll talk about it, and I'll explain it all as well as I can. <laughs> Goodbye, son. So, you know now, Master Adrian. Yes. Why didn't you say anything? When I heard your accent, I thought it might be you, Master Adrian. But I only knew you as a child, and from what your adoptive mother said, I was only sure once you showed me the photograph of Miss Angelina. You knew she was dead? Yes. Her ladyship and I drove to the scene early this morning. Our source in the police informed us. Why all the smoke and mirrors? Why didn't you just tell me what I needed to know? We didn't know how you'd react. I went to the village a short while ago to inform Miss Valley and the others, but I couldn't find anyone. Lady Victoria thought it would be best to keep you occupied and keep an eye on you until... <laughs> yes, until reinforcements arrived. That won't be necessary. I'll go of my own will. I'm glad to hear that. Ask Lewis for the tickets. Sally should instruct him to collect the tickets from a travel agency in the next town. Thank you, Bates. Where are the ladies? They've retired. The last few days were very stressful for them. You know, there must still be an unknown antagonist. Yes, I believe someone was working with Miss Angelina. Someone from the castle? Or from the village. At least someone who really knows their way around. And ultimately cleared their partner out of the way.
I don't even know about it. My knowledge of... Hey, Lewis. What is it now? Are you back already? What are you talking about? Bates said he'd sent Sally to you, uh, so you drive her to the travel agent. Why a travel agent? If he's thrown her out, it would be just as easy to put her on a train. You mean Sally wasn't here? I haven't seen her since this morning. What's going on? Is he lying? Or Sally? Or is it Bates? Are one of those three the murderer? Only one of them has left the ground since I got here. Well, um... Not. Oh my god! Sally! Come on, think, Darren. Bates may have well told her to sort out the tickets. The unknown antagonist then murdered her before she could reach Lewis. That means all three of them could be innocent. Or better yet, anyone in the castle could still be after me. Yeah, well, apart from Sally. <sighs> She's the second young woman that was getting in someone's way. The window's open. The window is closed. The water is boiling hot. There really is something written on the tiles. A bee. Like Bates. That must mean that Bates isn't the murderer. I mean, how could Sally have written a bee on the tiles? And when? As her head was being held underwater and she was frantically fighting for her life? Or after the shock caused her untimely death? I'm not gonna make it that easy for you. You're gonna have to be a bit more creative to throw me off the scent. Bates is the one I can trust the most. It seems the murderer wanted to keep me away from him. I have to talk. Oh no! The castle is burning! I can't get out that way without protection. I'd be engulfed in the flames. Okay, okay, think, Darren. Uh, towels. There's some of them. Excellent. It's dripping wet. Okay, Darren, take a deep breath and go for it. Bates! Can you hear me? Adrian, my boy, it's all over. <laughs> you can't. Don't worry, I'll get you out of here. No. I've spent my whole life in this castle, and I want to die here. But you. Listen, boy. 
This castle drove your father and his father before him to disaster. Don't let it corrupt you, too. Defend yourself against it. How should I defend myself against it? Get away from here and don't ever come back. <laughs> you have a life in New England waiting for you. A good life, even if you don't see it like that. Run, Darren Michaels. Run and don't ever look. Okay, I'll go, but not before I found Angelina's murderer. Ah, there you are. I was starting to worry I'd started the fire too soon. What? It was you? You killed Angelina and the others? You set fire to the castle and imprisoned me? I started the fire, yes. And I locked you in the bunker. But I'm no murderer. So don't force me to be one. What is all this? What do you want? This is no time for long explanations. The car's waiting. We're going on a little trip. All right then, Lewis. What have you got to do with the Gordons? Why are you chasing this illusion? I'm not interested in the curse. He's only after the money. That... That's impossible! Hello, dear brother. So, you still haven't worked it out. What? What are you doing? I'm fulfilling my destiny. I will evoke Mordred's power and use it for my own purposes. And Boris? And Sally? And my adoptive mother? She guessed who I was when I was standing at her door. She wanted to warn the Order. I couldn't allow that. She banged her head on the side table. I thought she was dead. What's this all about? Wh what do you want from me? I cannot enter the Academy nor the Summoning Chamber without the blood of a male Gordon. You just can't imagine my disappointment when I had to acknowledge that Richard's blood wouldn't do me, and my delight when I found you. And the whole time you never knew about me? No. Our mother and the others kept the secret very well hidden. But then I found some writings which told me everything. I came to Biddeford to wrap you around my little finger. And it worked well. I knew that we were bonded by something, and that you'd do anything for me. What was all that with Reginald Boris? The Order put him on my back, as I found out shortly after your mother's accident. Boris wanted to sideline me, by putting me in the frame for Fuller's murder. My plan was to take you back with me to England. But as long as Boris was around, I was worried that he'd tell you all about me. So, I flew back to England and called you up. And, just as I expected, you turned up here like a shining hero to rescue me. And your death? Who had to die for you? The good Miss Valley built the order back up again. After there had been no sign of it for almost a hundred years. No wonder that she hung around there so much. Samuel, our father, killed her little brother Vic. I had to protect myself from her. So you murdered her in cold blood and set her on fire. And killed two birds with one stone. No pun intended. The Order lost its leader and everyone thought I was dead to boot. All I had to do was forge my diary entries and lure you into the castle. Wasn't that a big risk? Sending me into the castle? Of course. 
But what choice did I have? I couldn't go myself, and Lewis had proven himself to be incapable. If anyone could find the mosaic tiles, it was you. I guessed that you'd found out about our secret. But we always had a plan B for that eventuality. Set fire to the castle and kill everyone in it? How'd you arrive at that? Mom? Now, get in there. Stand there, Mother. Listen, Angelina. Shut it. Lewis, guard the door. Make sure that no one gets in or out. And you... Let me guess. I've got to open the door. Correct. Put the pieces in place. That's strange. The oil lamp's lit. I don't need the candle anymore. There are three there are three grooves in the stone plinth. The tile fits exactly into one of the grooves. The second tile fits too. Okay, all the tiles are in place. There has to be something about the lion head and the flare. Maybe I can press it. I don't think so. Cut open your hand on the wall. You want me to... Do it! Don't do it, Darren. You mustn't open the gate for her. I'll count to three. Three. Stop! All right. I'll do it. That's it! Come on! Get in there! Impressive. It looks like it's been a real long time since anyone has been in here. This is just the beginning. I can feel the power. Mordred is here. Very close. <sighs> Crap. The Academy's builder picked eight chosen ones who guard over the power. The gate should only be opened when all eight are standing on these stone slabs. Otherwise, death will follow. So it says in the old writings. Oh well, I guess we can forget that. There's just four of us. Don't be stupid. You'll think of something. She's completely nuts. It's no good. It seems like each of the eight slabs has to be loaded with weight. What if one of the eight chosen ones suddenly and irreplaceably dies? They must have taken some precautions against that happening. I better take a look around. A total of eight stone slabs embedded in the floor. Let's see. That wasn't so great. There's a note lying here. There's a semicircle drawn on the note. It's made up of eight different symbols. I reckon that this is some kind of a user manual for the floor slabs. There's a knife or something drawn on the third tile from the left. Also, there's a flower on the outer left one. Uh, the left-hand middle one has a sun. The, the right-hand middle one has water, and the outer right one is a snowflake.
Angelina? What is it? You have to stand on one of the stone slabs. So I can then get a knife in my ribs? I don't think so. The stone slabs are connected to the grate. If you don't stand on them, I can't open the grate. Then she should stand on it. Where should she go? Mom, can you please stand on the stone slab here? Dress of green and hat of white, all would agree a welcome sight, with bells that in the wind do swing, heralding the start of spring. On this panel is written, Make things harder, make things softer, make a rich man, make a papa. Not too close, but love me true. Too close, and I'll devour you. There's a rhyme on the panel. Sails I have, but sail I don't. At least not on the sea. But round and round, and up and down, working hard for thee. Grinding up with my back teeth, producing, as I said, the main ingredient which you need to make your daily bread. Here's written, in the air it flies, on the ground it lies. It adorns the trees, makes old men wheeze. On the stove it melts, from gray skies it pelts. There's some kind of mechanism fitted here. Lots of symbols. <laughs> what a surprise. This box is empty.
stone slab is locked into place, but nothing else is happening. Looks like the stone slab is locked into place. I think I've deactivated the stone slab. Okay, very carefully now. A knife was released when the trap was sprung. I'll take it. Levers, bars, buttons... Huh. I can choose whether I want to select the symbol on the left or right with the little levers. The bars can be moved, and it seems like I can enter the answer with the big button. I have to cut to spring the right trap. The stone block should land on the slab. I hope I'm not mistaken.
quickly now. Hopefully this is the right rope. What are you doing? That was... One more slip up like that, and our mother gets it. Got it? Yes, all right. It won't happen again. That's what I thought. Okay, now four of the stone slabs are deactivated, and Catherine's standing on one of them. This is my chance. I've got to convince Angelina and Louis to stand on the wrong slabs. Hopefully my plan's gonna work. Angelina? What is it? Listen, th there's really no other way. Uh, we'll have to stand on the remaining slabs if the gate's gonna open. All right, then. But if there's any messing around... Got it. I think I've disarmed all the traps. Mom, you stay there. Lewis stands over there. Uh... I think we should swap places. You got nothing against that, have you? Do what you want. Oops. Very clever. So ruthless. Don't worry. You're next. The wait is on the slab. What are you waiting for? Lewis is dead. Don't you care? He wouldn't have left these ruins alive anyway. Yes, Master. What? Was that Mordred? Run! Ah! Oh, let's get out of here. I heard something. The Order. That must be the order. Stop him! He mustn't be allowed to evoke him! Calm down, people. I... I damn! I'm on your side! I... Oh, damn idiots! Oh, they want to make sure. Angelina isn't here, and she hasn't gone past me. Either she's still in the summoning chamber, or got in the labyrinth some other way. Whoa! The side doors closed when the big gate opened. There's a seriously deep abyss that way. Behind me is the Order, who'd rather kill me than think first. He went that way! There's no choice. I have to face up to Angelina. It could be a trap. Maybe it's the only chance to save Mom. Is 
Is she here? No. Come, let's get you out of here. No. Don't you understand, Adrian? It's not about me. It's not only about you, either. Your father caused a lot of suffering, and I don't want you to become guilty, too. I don't intend to. I... That's not your decision. These are powers that are greater than a single person. Exactly. It's about infinite power. Divine power. Power that has been sleeping for too long. To the altar! Screw you. I don't like to repeat myself. Go to the altar and read from the book. I don't like to repeat myself either. Screw you. The next bullet is going through your kneecap. You won't get any further without me. You can't kill me. You need me. But I don't need her. And what can you do without an eye? A hand? There is no curse. It's a mental illness. It's passed down from generation to generation and causes delusions. Delusions? <laughs> and what do you call this? Read. So the cow who said dear and caraxo zodere motarebe motarebi vexto sabra ve malior vexto sabra malior im ibute amenia vibusa dear amena voxataka. Yes, yes. And now? Angelina, it's lunacy. Even if there was a curse, then it'd only affect the male Gordons. No, no, me too. I, I can hear them. The voices, they whisper to me. Always since you went. Angelina, please. I'm sorry, dear brother. I need your blood, and no other. 